the title might be wrong because uh, yeah, I did the title before before I saw your articles because otherwise it would would have taken it even longer than that to go live. But uh, hey, we're live, so we are. I mean, just fifteen minutes late. That's that's all right. That's okay. It's the it's the Not so even. Just twelve minutes late. Let's go. Twelve minutes? Okay, my mine clock says sixteen minutes right now. Oh what? yeah, what? Okay, my iPhone is okay, my Windows PC is apparently four minutes uh past the real time for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. Twelve, you're right. My iPhone sh shows the correct Okay, maybe that. I can trust Microsoft. Yeah, yeah, the PC. Can't trust Windows. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, in case you didn't know, and you, if you didn't tune in last week, uh, this is a very special episode because uh, for the first time ever, uh, I'm not kind of hosting the show, basically. Uh, because, yeah, uh, the, the other guy in the orange shirt is taking over this time the co-host was pro promoted to yeah yeah the co-host the the assistant to the regional manager or something something i don't know <laughs> to the yeah the assistant regional manager to the regional manager yeah yeah no assist assistant to the regional manager. Uh, anyway yeah yeah no jump. Uh, have you seen the office of course yeah yeah, yeah okay okay well, I say of course. I watched it like maybe last year. Oh, okay. The first time ever. Yeah, I yeah. Seen the office. Yeah, yeah. For me, also, actually, I have not like uh, if two years ago, first the very first time I saw it. So pretty late, also at the same. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm it's also late to the bandwagon. I have not watched the British one though. Only the American. Yeah, one. same here, actually. And uh, so many people are telling me, like, dude, the British British version is way better. So I don't know. Mm, interesting. Yeah. I heard that both are good, but different. Like, yeah, yeah, different yeah, yeah. They are different, absolutely. Th that's what I understand. Also, uh, that's what ke everyone keeps telling me, like. You can't really compare them, but but somehow you can, or I don't know. Anyway, anyway, how was the first experience of... Uh, first of all, how long did it take? Um, It took me about two hours, as you uh, said it would. That's but, actually but did, like, pretty good. One, one hour, I think I did yesterday, and then one hour today. Oh, okay. I oh. was very stressed because yeah. I started looking at stuff. Yeah. I just went to like no like one of the basic like text news websites. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I started scrolling through like what happened through the, the previous week. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, there's like nothing interesting had happened. Yeah. Like, oh, nothing that like to me would be like uh you know, yes worthy covering. And I was like, fuck, okay, all right, let's let's start digging deeper. Mm -hmm. So. I went to like a couple other websites. Then I was like, okay, let's see what Reddit has to say. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Reddit. Then uh, Reddit is always such a good place to like find stuff. Yes. Because the hive mind of the internet pulls from like every possible uh, source. So it's like, oh yeah, well, that's that's something to talk about. That's cool. Yep. Uh so yeah, but I I think I got enough stuff. We have some funny news, not funny news, but mm -hmm. we have some silly news. We have some serious news. Mm -hmm. We can't forget about AI. We have a whole AI segment. Nice. No. We have some European news. So we have some global news. So it's a bit of everything. Something for everyone. 7 out of 10. Something for everyone. Yeah. Uh... I did not, as uh, a uh, disclaimer, I did not really like prepare anything for the meme break. So I hope you, come, you came prepared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did. Okay, very good. I was like, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to be good at it. Uh, yeah, okay, honestly, uh, yeah, two hours for me is ba basically, uh, after two years, I have be been like refining my strategy of how to deal with it, and two hours is like, 
I think my Pretty... educational background was useful in that sense mm -hmm. because I still kind of have that muscle memory of like processing and throwing away the unnecessary information. Yeah. So, like if I see something that is not relevant, I'm like, okay, we'll move it on next thing. Yep. Uh, so I was just kind of like, just kind of speed running through the initial part, and then when I found some interesting uh, things, that I was like, okay, well, let's let's see what what they are about. Actually. Exactly, exactly. That's my strategy also. Like, uh, to ha I'm reading an article halfway through, and oh yeah, this is like not that interesting. I just throw it away. So there's a lot of like articles that I don't include usually, and yeah, yeah. yeah and but yeah, it's it's kind of a like a I don't know. And I have been given a lot of like feedback, like oh, we should. Uh, maybe we can go a little deeper uh, because okay, if I'm outing a little bit, Michael has has said to me like, since this is a, the only tech news show that I watch ever, which is like kind of a really big praise for us, which is like, wow, you're trusting us to be your tech news source, basically. Uh, <laughs> this is this is the meme basically that you're you're uh, the the. So I'm gonna squinty eyes. You're looking through memes and trying to figure out the news of uh, of uh, of the world, basically through memes or something. Yeah, I do kind of think that like it's hard to in depth cover topics like of, in this format. Yes, because of course if we were it is. Videos. It would be like uh, six, eight hours long if it would be like digging into deep into the stories. Like, or alternatively, if we made like you know, mm -hmm. edited videos about certain topics, then it would, like a different thing, you know, then like, okay, well, here is the topic of, I don't know, mm -hmm. everything that happened with AI over the last like three years or so, yep. or yep. whatever, five years. Yep. Uh, and this would be like, I don't know, a 20 minute long video about it. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> so well, a 20 minute long video and about, I don't know, five hours of footage. So basically. two hours, and you basically said like uh, you kind of have speed run. Did 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 the speed run mo mostly? I speed ran just the initial part when I was okay uh, deciding if the articles were interesting or not. Basically, I was like, okay, is this interesting to me? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, of course, because like every article or like every piece of news can be interesting to someone, you know. Yeah, of course. So I was like, okay, like the first uh, the first couple of paragraphs, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. okay. And if it didn't seem interesting, then I was like, okay, moving on. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I got like I had more stories. Yeah. Uh, and then I was like, okay, well, I started actually looking through them and then I at that point I also filtered a couple more stories. Mhm. Mm yeah. Editing. That... Editing happened. Yeah, that's what I do almost always also pretty much that if I see like, okay, yeah, this is not really that interesting. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. So, uh, shall we get into it, I guess, or I got my coffee. Yeah. I also right have here. coffee. Uh, unless we have some news on, not, not um, the off-topic news, but like some life news. Some live news. Life, life, uh, life news. Uh, life. yeah. I don't know. Uh, Black and gold color power today. Let's go. Yeah, black, uh, blue and gold. I, I, yeah, but black, yeah, black is also in the mix. But yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. I tried something new. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's the opposite from last week where I had the computer blue and the uh, the. That's right. Yeah, yeah, it's the, exactly the opposite. I don't know. Yeah. How was how was your week? In, in I'm doing good. Uh, yeah. Uh, not that's really interesting, but we uh, inserted a pump into the river to get free water for the for the street. That's something that I did. Uh, I helped. I mean, I kind of, I was more 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 in the helping us and educating myself uh, what I have to do in order to. Because every summer, uh, every spring, and every every spring we put the pump into the river, and every autumn when the when right before winter we take it out. So anyway, yeah, I don't know. That was who the most. Sorry. But whose idea it was? Oh, it's the it's the street here, the the oldest street. Oh, 
Thanks. The guys, uh, they maintain the pump here and uh, yeah, free garden water for okay. for the whole summer. Okay, is that legal? Uh, so. yes, because it's... I don't see why it wouldn't be. But... Yeah, but uh, okay, there, there is a caveat because the pump is... There's a huge pump technically next to the river that you aren't allowed in the current uh in the current area of like I don't, you can't build anything right beside the river mm -hmm. technically okay. in the in the new estonian um like it, it isn't legal mm -hmm. but it was built before estonia was a thing so mm -hmm. then it's okay so technically, so okay. technically you didn't build anything during the estonian era so uh so it's legal so if it completely collapses we can't rebuild it we can't mm -hmm. like uh build a new one that's illegal but to if it's it was already there then it's like okay Wait, but you said you remove it every autumn what uh i mean the the part that goes into the water we remove oh, okay, from the water okay. but the, but the big the... thing stays okay. at uh for 50 oh, I years i want to say 50 years probably yeah oh, 72 yeah 72 was i think the yeah yeah anyway super interesting i know anyway so shall we get into the the tech news yeah i think we can yeah yeah and uh complaining about and those of you who are tuning in this is uh me yeah this is Kirillo taking taking the lead uh, to the tech news so so the, what how we're gonna do this is i will basically oh. just yeah direct yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> because i don't have control over the uh you yes know, the yes technology i will be the muscle i'm not hosting yeah yeah so uh seem as like a stage hand mm-hmm like like assembling the pieces of our uh, stage. Yeah, yeah. You're the uh, brain and I'm the muscle. Mise en scène, mise en scène. Mm -hmm. All right, let's start. I guess this was the biggest story that I could imagine for the week, which says a lot about this previous week. Or at least it's the story that made the most, I feel like, stink on the internet. Okay. So, uh, Imager. Imager? Imager. Uh, How do yeah. you pronounce this? Imger? I don't know. Imager. 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 I feel like it has to be right because it's like image, imager, imager. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the it's the GIF and GIF uh, mm -hmm. uh, debate all over again. Absolutely. Yeah. So the news is that imager slash imager is changing its terms of service starting from May 15th. And according to the new terms of service, all content that was... Uh, that is old, uh, so that this is a quote, old, unused, and inactive content, as well as uh, nudity, pornography, and sexually explicit content will be removed from the platform. So, why is this a big yeah. deal? So, Imager slash Imager, uh, like the whole, their whole thing when the platform first appeared was that people could upload and host images on the platform without any kind of mm, any kind of like attachment to you know you yeah. didn't need to create an account to upload an image you could just do that you get a link and then like save it somewhere and then like share it and that was basically the thing mm -hmm. and it's it's basically been functioning the same way as since the beginning uh so the biggest i feel like shift uh, for the platform is not even the explicit content removal, but the uh, old, unused, and inactive content removal, because it means that every piece of content or content, every image that is not tied to an actual user mm. mm -hmm. uh, can be removed or will be removed, as I understand it. Yeah. So a lot of memes will be lost in this way. I mean, on the other hand, it's not that huge of That's... a deal in the sense that like probably these things made their way to other platforms over the years hopefully yeah 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 but like if you are one of the people who has like a whole 
I don't know, collection of immig immigrant yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or pictures. And then, uh, yeah, like if the original picture was uploaded by, a, you know, a someone that did not make an account for it, mm -hmm. according to the new terms of service, it will be removed. Mm -hmm. So pretty big deal. I don't yep. know. I mean, I feel like most of Imager content is like that. I mean, I don't have the numbers to support it. Yeah, I I believe you. But I believe you also because the, if you can upload an image without an account, then most people will do it, right? Yeah. What's it sort the... of functions as like well, a more modern... Uh... Oh, but that's not really transfer-wise. Uh, not transfer-wise, but what's the... We transfer. Uh, yeah, we transfer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it works differently because it's like you know peer to peer sort of. Yes, yes, thing. yes, yes. Only the people with the link can. Yeah. Uh, Whereas, like, download. Yeah. Pretty much anyone can access Imager files. Yeah, 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 and and there's so many. Yeah, I I even thought about like uh, Apple shortcuts is widely used with Im Imgur because uh, they complete all the most of the shortcuts that if you need a, to upload any kind of random picture, then you usually use Im Imgur for that basically. And and yeah, I have been using Imgur also for uh, with my account, but some pictures that it would kind of suck to lose but luckily they are tied to my account but again well, i'm not well, completely relying on imgur also uh, well that's the thing because the way i understand it is that it doesn't really matter if they're tied to oh, unless you mm -hmm. uploaded them but mm -hmm. if someone else uploaded and you like you know you can like add it to your like library or whatever right yep. that's how it works. yeah i think so yeah 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 but if the original person who uploaded it did not have an account, mm -hmm. then that image will be removed. Completely lost, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ergo, it will be lost from your, like, whatever, archive as well. Yeah, Is what yeah. I understand. And, like, because, like, it's like it's all about, like, random uploads and then sharing and, like, you know, s saving to your own place, like a, huge like, a huge bunch of, like, different pictures can be lost this way. Yeah. Yeah, process. yeah. How many, might, I don't know, Reddit posts are like yeah linking to imager yeah. Imi images basically like yeah oh here's the proof of it, yeah. whatever i'm saying basically and those proofs are will be gone pretty much yeah because more likely than not that person did not make an account i mean i don't really have an immigrant account yeah yeah it's kind of a i do but at the same time i was like Maybe I need this at some point in the future, and that was my reasoning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's it's always felt to me like the place where you like, for example, I don't know, you're having some problem with your PC or something, and you don't know what to what it what it is, and mm -hmm. you're like, okay, well I need to ask credit. And they're like, okay, well send some pictures of your whatever, like terminal, blah blah blah, like whatever it is, and you take screenshots, pop them on Imager. Uh, like anonymously mm -hmm. publish the link to your thread people can see it so now all of those things would be gone basically <clears throat> unless you bothered making an account so yeah it's a pretty big deal i would be curious to know i guess we'll maybe hear about that later in terms of what like percentage of the total content on immigrant would be removed as a result so the other part of this story is that uh Along with like uncredited content or whatever, I don't really know how to, how to. Um... I'm showing my Im Imgur right now. What I have been, <laughs> like, three posts, but they're all public. Anyway, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. So as long, uh, along with uh, the old uncredited content or like anonymous content, I don't know how to like what's the best way to describe it. Mm -hmm. Uh. Uh, Immigrant will be removing nudity, pornography, and sexually explicit content along with it. Yeah. Uh, and they are saying they doing so uh, could address the risks that the platform and business uh, have and will protect the company's future. So it's another one on the, mm -hmm. at this point, pretty long list of companies that are deciding to... Uh, <laughs> yeah... This is yeah. I'm betting there's some kind of a like a 
AI scraping fear also probably going on. Like they want to, uh, we don't want to be a, like a, just a photo dump repository for AI or something, something that they can train off of, or maybe. Oh, and that could be true. Yeah. Yeah. Because this, uh, Im Imger is looking at like, okay, this AI thing is also happening and we are just a huge collection of any kind of photos for AI to suck in and spit out basically. And maybe they will, the next move is to make the API like, uh, uh to, to pay for the API or, of Imgur or, mm. or companies. Yeah. I, I'm just guessing and, but that's what tap is happening in the world uh, with a lot of stuff right now. So maybe Imgur is looking at this thing also right now. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So porn will be banned on Imgur mm -hmm. and consequently would also, uh, as we already were saying, Reddit uh, is a very popular destination for Imgur yeah. for picture sharing, which would also affect Reddit. Who doesn't directly allow explicit content being uploaded on the uh, yep. on the website? So people just went through. Yeah, 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 yeah. So basically, who if you have some favorite porn on Imgur, now is the time to save it to your local computer. Slash, slash Reddit. Yeah. yeah, or yeah, if you have any kind of something that you have some kind of attachment to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uploaded to Imgur, now is the time to save it locally and. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. All right. Or put it in a cloud storage or something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. So Imagur is uh, dead. <laughs> I mean. Moving on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, it will just... I feel like it would then, yeah, because uh, just result in people... I don't know. I mean, it could, it could go either way. Either it will make people make accounts and, like, uh, you know, whatever... <laughs> Yeah, most but there. most people. I'm hoping people would just not bother. Yeah, I also feel like yeah, it's yeah. possible. And even if they, if it is, they they, I don't know if they, the people are lazy. People yeah. are just lazy. Yeah, yeah, like make a whole account, and like logging in, making passwords, it's like too much work. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like yeah, it's entirely possible that many people would just not bother. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's move on to the other piece of news. Right yeah. now we have like a mix. Uh, I decided to start with like a mix of news and then we have like an AI section. And yeah. then we have like a silly news section. All right. Uh, so I feel like this one is for you. Yeah. Uh, so the news is uh, I should Should I click it? I'm waiting, um, for, I'm waiting for a sign yeah, also. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. We are, okay. we are moving on to the next story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, Tesla is lowering prices on its cars for the fifth time in 2023. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! So me. Lotus Film, good morning. Good morning. Yes. Lotus Film is like, oh, what the hell was happening? Yeah, okay, Lotus Film, if you didn't catch it, uh, the guy in the orange shirt is uh, hosting this week. Hmm. That's yeah. true. Yes. A new random person that never uh, was uh, featured on the stream before. No, no. Ah. Mm. Everybody loves you. Uh, yeah, so this is a more American news, but mm -hmm. I feel like it probably impacts the European market for Teslas as well. Oh, yeah. But the news is that basically for the fifth time in three months, mm. the year has just started by the way, mm -hmm. uh, Tesla rate, uh, lowered prices on basically all their cars. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Model 3, which is, uh, as my understanding is that it's like a budget one. Yeah, the yeah the least expensive one, yeah. Uh, dropped by $1,000. Mm -hmm. Now starting at 42000 which is still a huge. Uh, and mm -hmm. then the more expensive ones had even bigger discounts, or just not just discount, it's like like the recommended retail price, as I understand, was cut. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Just to, for background, this is basically uh, because all the um, uh, supply chain and all the COVID stuff, and that raised a lot of prices. And these, 
Tesla's official stances, these are now the normal prices now, again, that should have been if COVID and uh, all the supply uh, chain things didn't even happen, basically. So, yeah, this is this is what is happening. But, yeah, I don't know. And also I mean, tech is ch getting cheaper over time, so basically... That is true, that is true. Yeah. Because my understanding is that they aren't, like, releasing new models every year, right? That's just... Not no, 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 yeah, yeah. Possible, There's... Right? So yeah, it's... yeah. Yeah, so the Model Y uh, cars dropped by $2,000 each. Mm-hmm. So are fifty three and fifty seven thousand dollars respectively, and Model S and X. These are I assume like the premium ones. Yeah, the yeah the more expensive ones. Yeah, dropped by five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So pretty substantial. And again, this is like the latest of five cuts that already ex happened this year. Yep. Uh, and uh, the interesting tidbit is that, uh, for example, Model S. Since its release in 2022, no, mm, 2012, yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, since in in the last year, uh, its price uh, lowered by twenty thousand dollars. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. Huge. That's yeah. That's pretty big. Yeah. I don't so, know. They, they're uh, at the same time. Uh, you you need to refresh kind of the, the model 3 especially that has been out for four may, oh, maybe five years at this point and it's getting kind of like people are like where's the ref the refresh like i kind of want a new thing right or something and there was a picture on the internet uh the model model 3 refresh uh picture which looked pretty good yeah this one some fan render uh i don't know maybe uh because we live in a ai society right now right so who knows if this is real but yeah some kind of a leaked photo of uh, the re refreshed model 3 which looks pretty good i don't know at least to me i don't know who knows but yeah uh so yeah. Uh, anything else? Still hugely expensive uh, cars, though. Oh, of course, yeah. This like... I would never buy this new. I would buy it only used. Yeah. Like forty-three thousand. Even though was and... it forty-three thousand, forty-two thousand dollars is the... for a car. Yikes. Yeah, yeah. The Tesla income lowered uh, also twenty percent. Yeah, that's. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean. <laughs> time to lay off a few thousand people uh, yeah the economic situation that is going on right now also and yeah people don't have not that much of money on hand right now and Ooh, on that note yes we're not going to talk about it right now but we do have a, a piece of news about people not having money Ooh. and what people do and cut okay but yeah surely people are not buying teslas when they are short on money That's yeah true. yeah people I, are I can confirm Struggling to pay rent pretty much right now. Yep. Uh, yeah, ID2 looks also really interesting. Yeah, loads of film, absolutely. The so Volkswagen ID2. And it's like half the, mm, a little bit more than half the price of like the cheap Tesla. I mean, yeah, yeah. But it's going to be a, like a small car also compared to the Model 3. It's going to uh... be probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, shall we move on? Yeah, let's move on to the next story. This is continues our uh, random mix of news. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the article reads, uh, Windows 11 start menu ads look set to get even worse. Uh, so for those of you who are not familiar with Windows 11, um, yes. it, it has ads. Yes. Oh, yeah. You, you, you just I, uh, discovering it right I now. Just, I just discovered it last week. <laughs> and I was very puzzled by that. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I really feel like it's not a great idea. But so what? What I encountered last week was that mm -hmm. when you when you like have a fresh Windows install, and you click on the 
start or like um, what's, what's the code yeah start, start menu start, start menu yeah start like menu the basic yeah. one that you inter like through which you interface with the computer yep. on the windows it has um well, ads basically. It has ads for Microsoft Store apps basically mm -hmm. on the on the start menu. And my initial thought was that, that these were all pre-installed by default with Windows, which I thought was weird, because it doesn't really. It would it would know that these are not installed unless you clicked on them, and then you would be sent to Microsoft Store. And I was like, okay, well, why would they install like uh, Telegram and like a uh, Telegram, uh, WhatsApp and Instagram and TikTok, uh, Snapchat like on by default on Windows? But those are actually not installed. Instead, they're apps, mm. which lead you to the uh, Microsoft Store when you click on them. <laughs> I just had which a... is very yeah. Oh, sorry, lots of film. six second YouTube ad. Yeah, welcome to the ad culture. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel like it's not a bad idea to just keep Windows 10 until you can no longer have Windows 10. Honestly, uh, I mean, granted, in you know, in the big, in the grand scheme of things, it's not that big of a deal because you can also remove those like links from the menu. But the fact that they're still there is kind of rubs me the wrong way. Uh, you know, Apple has been getting some criticism over its ads uh, that they put on the App Store, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But when you are on a marketplace, I feel like it's fine to have ads on the app store because it's a store, right? You know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, the fact how they were yeah, promoting, yeah, like, yeah. how they were promoting like casinos and like gambling apps. Not great. <sighs> yep. But like fundamentally, I don't think that it's like scandalous to have ads on the app store. Mm -hmm. But when you have ads on your like, like the first thing you interface with when you like start your computer. Mm -hmm. Where I get your new computer is ads. It's like I don't know. There's something about it is just not, uh, especially because you paid for it as well. As Microsoft, uh, because Windows is a uh, you know, uh, is a yes. paid uh, yeah. operation system, yeah, which does not come uh, you know included with your hardware purchase. Mm -hmm. <sighs> not great. So yeah. So if you were already frustrated by the ads that exist uh, today. You'll be happy to know that there'll be even more of them later. Yeah. So the preview build number 2343E5, which is apparently now only in the dev, uh, like uh, in the, like, I don't know what's the, like a preview, dev preview, uh, you know, state, not uh, publicly released yet, has uh, a new type of ad which promotes uh, signing into your Microsoft account to interface with your computer, as opposed to creating local users, as you would in like previous Windows versions. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, logging it, it's the benefits. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm always... So it's sort of, sort of giving me the energy of like that notification when you had the like unactivated Windows, you know, and you would get like yeah, pop-ups yeah. of like, oh, your license or whatever has expired or something and like activate it. It kind of has similar energy, like the the yellow exclamation point. You know, it sort of gives you like, oh, you have some error. You know, you need to fix it. Yeah. But like, it's not really because you can totally use your computer without having, oh, uh, yeah, connected, having been connected to Microsoft account. Mm hmm I mean, you probably want to be connected to Microsoft anyway. Uh, yeah, it depends. You yeah. To, uh, you don't. Have There's to, some uh, benefits, yeah. absolutely. That if you yeah. have signed in and you can, uh. I don't know that the the desktop wallpaper will sync across all your devices and some settings will sync and yeah yeah you can sync some stuff and yeah some yeah. benefits absolutely I myself I'm a local only uh, user yeah pretty much I, yeah fair enough if there's a local user account I will do it yeah so this is. Yeah, yeah, but there have been rumors for a long time that uh, Windows 11 or the next version, whatever, Windows 12 or whatever, will be like, nope, it's going to be cloud only. And if you don't like it, then screw off, I guess. I mean, it seems quite likely, honestly, mm -hmm. at this but point. They have, they have way more control than, yeah. 
And I mean, the implications of that are pretty severe because I'm sure that would piss a lot of people off. Oh yeah. Uh, by itself, but then like, what do you do? You know, I mean, yeah. Linux, I guess. Yeah, like, Linux. But, like, for most people, like, what do you do? You know. Yeah. Because I mean, but by and large, you know, Microsoft has a monopoly on. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. On computing, like a home computing devices that are not Apple, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, like the the the, the disproportion distribution between my between like Windows and Mac OS is like huge. Mm -hmm. you know? Like Mac OS is like a small portion of the market. Oh yeah. So yeah, so the new release, which I assume is the next one, the next public release, uh, I'm guessing. I'm not entirely sure if it's the the, the very next one or one of the upcoming ones. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it will pester you to log into your Microsoft account, and prompt you to do that for more different reasons. Uh, so, in order for you to back up your device in the cloud, uh, to personalize your security and profile settings. Uh, to access your cloud storage and stuff like that, so it will just keep uh, keep doing that. You'll have like this uh, yellow exclamation point near your profile picture in the start menu. Yeah. At all times, as I understand, right? Yeah, just, yeah. Be constantly there if you're not logged into Microsoft account. Oh yeah. So fun times, fun times. Mm hmm. Yeah, I had a, I had I honestly had a bit of a cultural shock like this last week. <laughs> like, what do you What do you mean I have ads on my like thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, honestly, honestly. Yeah, Microsoft. Really yeah, like, this this is just pure like, we want to squeeze every bit of money out of you, basically. Yeah. That's it. I mean, yeah, and they, we. By the way, in on top of like. You paid for the OS. You you are seeing ads, and we're gonna sell your data. Also, by the way, so and yeah, and yeah. we're gonna harvest your data also for ChatGPT. By the way, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just kind of. I feel like there's a lot mixed in there because, like, I understand them wanting to promote their own Microsoft Store, which many people just don't interface with at all because you have other places to get your apps from. Similarly to Mac, of course, you know, you, ha you can find most of the apps, uh, you know, that are not, you know, that are maybe even listed on the App Store separately. And like, this is like, was like the old school way of sort of getting these apps was to mm -hmm. just download them directly from websites and then update them like that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like App Store on Mac may be more sort of ingrained in in like the habitual like you know uh consciousness of users than like using microsoft store and windows yeah you know what i mean uh yeah maybe yeah because you can you can you know get like you know games and apps and like product utilities like stuff mm -hmm. on the microsoft store but i feel like for most people the initial thing like they are thinking of is just on oh, Google or like oh I'm like under there. and then you have like you know Steams and you know many 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 different marketplaces where you can do that from yeah I may be wrong because I haven't actually used Windows in many well in a long time I mean yeah. in in years before mm -hmm. this before I got the new PC uh so maybe it changed. Mm -hmm. But it definitely was my impression before, like, uh, you know, when I, for example, had my previous laptop. Uh, yeah, yeah. A gaming laptop. Like, I would just not interface with Microsoft Store at all. Mm -hmm. Like, in any capacity. Yeah, <clears throat> I have also downloaded probably two apps from there or something like that over the years that I've been using this also because, yeah, because why would you? Like, yesterday, I, I needed to download Discord on the new PC. We forgot to install it, mm -hmm. and my initial reaction was like, "Oh, you know, uh, just just Google it, right? Discord has a website, so just yeah. download it from there." And I messaged Maurice because he has like a particular system of where the apps should go on the PC because mm. everything is to be in order. Mm -hmm. So I was like, "Okay, so where do I, which path do I choose?" Mm -hmm. And he was like, "Oh, why don't you just like install it through Microsoft Store?" And I was like, "Oh, that's a thing that I can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah." I mean, of course I can, right? But it's just like not the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah, I'm just yeah. old. This is also a, yeah. uh, an option. Yeah, yeah. You, you could go to a store. And yeah. But yeah, uh, also, Lotus Film, I think, yeah, uh, they don't, I'm, uh, yeah, they don't make a lot of money with Windows 
really because they are mostly after for the data and uh, the cloud business is the biggest uh, business for windows uh, by a long shot uh, windows as uh, uh, microsoft azure that's where the money really is all the cloud services and all the server stuff that's where microsoft makes the money but yeah, and uh, and yeah, the new ChatGPT business apparently also needs mm-hmm. ma- vastly vast amounts of data. So yeah, we're just data vessels to them, basically. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, twelve uh, percent of the of its income. Yeah, Windows isn't money maker. Yeah, yeah, Windows is is pretty small peanuts compared to the cloud business that they uh, have. Well, being true, I'm not uh, talking about this from the perspective of Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Or like, you know, because of course they want to make the most money out of it as possible, as much as possible. Yeah. But like from the perspective of the end user, because as I said, you still have to pay for Windows. Yeah. Even if it is only 12% of Microsoft income, like I don't care mm-hmm. how many percent of, of uh, Microsoft income Windows is, but like, you know, I paid for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I... And I feel like having ads uh, like that, just like that, it's just like, just like here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but just not great. Remember, re- remember when I... Uh, we reported on a Chinese phone w- which had like ads on the lock screen before you even open up the phone, basically, which had ads already. Like, if you just pick up the phone, you will see ads right yeah, away. That is crazy. Yeah, yeah. This is, yeah, yeah. This is the stuff. Anyway, yeah. Shall we move on? Yeah. So I think, uh, no, we have two more random pieces. Yeah. So the next one is very uh, small, short, short and sweet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is that Google may finally announce a foldable Pixel phone. That is next, like, whatever. Yes, event, I saw that, yeah. That they have. Uh, so uh, what is the, I mean, this is all sort of like a rumor, but, Mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, with Google, it's usually like, you know, it's like rumored, but usually that's what happens. Usually Mm -hmm. I I feel like Google is very bad at like concealing things and like hiding. Yeah, exactly. Google has been like, oh yeah, by the way, we, uh, there's a Google leak now apparently. And we totally didn't like hand this phone to a reporter or journalist or something like that, but. It just happened to leak. Uh, you get phone with ads much cheaper. It should <laughs> be an ad for you. Well, yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. The The default version of Windows should be ad-free. <laughs> and if you must put ads in your Windows, then make a free version of Windows or something. Some compromised, like, baby version of Windows with ads. That's yeah, just like the bare minimum of what you may need. That I I feel like that only happens when Mac takes a little bit away from the market share or Linux. Linux or Mac, if they ever become like a little bit bigger, and Microsoft's oh, but those are for free. I guess we have to make also a free distinction something something uh, another version or something. Yeah, but yeah, Maybe. but since they're like. I don't know what's the percentage like 80 80 percent of the market share then it's like pfft, we don't care but yeah uh windows market share is oh yeah uh i might be wrong but who knows yeah i'm guessing 80 um uh, uh yeah i mean if we look at it globally it's, it's kind of hard to yeah 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 it's but in the us it's 57 percent only but I would probably guess that macOS has the highest share in the US in the world. Like yes, pr- oh, most likely, yeah. But if you take like a global average, I think it may be even very close to 80, yeah. Yeah, uh, which is huge. Yeah, I'm seeing. Is this global? 70, uh, 76 worldwide? 2030, yeah, tw- 10 year. 10 year period. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, 75 is Mm -hmm. probably something like that. Yeah. Should be all right. Yeah. Yeah. Massively Mm. majority, right? Uh, Yeah. But 
but the Google Pixel Fold. Google Pixel Fold, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. my, my mind went off track. Mm -hmm. that you're not used to this whole hosting thing. Yeah, yeah. So basically, yes, Google is rumored to announce a foldable Pixel phone. Woo! Uh, so they are going to have an event uh, next month on May 10th. Yep. Uh, the classic. Like, and they do the year, right? They, you, Google they, I.O. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I imagine they will also announce, like, regular phones, right? Probably. On, on the same thing? Yep. They host one, one once a year, do they? Uh, like yeah. They do. Yes, they do, yeah. Yeah, so a uh, foldable phone, which will have basically a similar form factor to the Samsung Fold. Mm -hmm. So it will feature two displays, uh, a 5.8 inch, like uh, the, you know, the display that you use when the phone is folded, and 7.6 inch display when it's unfolded. Yeah. Um, bigger battery life. Uh, and interestingly, the same tensor chip that is currently in, the, which I mean, I guess it makes sense, but mm -hmm. I also am curious to see how, how suitable it would be for like a phone that is like much bigger and probably significantly more power hungry and powering two displays because like tensor is not exactly, yep. you know, a powerful chip, but it's good for, yeah, you know. I mean, it's powerful enough for like everyday usage and stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But like in synthetic benchmarks, it doesn't perform very well against like Snapdragons and and the uh, Apple chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll be curious to see um, how that works. And the biggest selling point would basically be, you know, the good old pure Android experience. Yeah. That uh, the Pixel phones always drive. And I guess the camera, because the Pixel phones are have pretty good ca cameras also. Uh, yeah. Uh, the leaks suggest that it may very well have old cameras, which, uh, y yeah. Pixel as old as Pixel 6 or even older. Oh, okay. But those are still... But those are still good, yeah. Still all right cameras. The problem is that the phone is rumored to cost seventeen hundred dollars. Mm. That's uh, that's so... the biggest turnoff for me, at least because Google usually is like more a little bit more cheaper than the competition usually. But I guess the folding screen that t took a lot of money or something to develop, probably or. Who knows? I suppose, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a tough sell because their most expensive phone costs 900 euros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is a they don't that is like twice the price. They're the they're the one of the big players to, who hasn't cracked the, the $1,000 phone market so far. Uh, yeah. I guess this is happening with the Pixel mm -hmm. Fold. Yeah. All cameras are not all right. Yeah, that's true. But I feel like, you know, when you spend... Uh, two <laughs> Seventeen hundred dollars on a phone. Yep. I mean, you probably should have some expectations for it, even if it's like a novelty device, like, mm -hmm. like a foldable phone, which I would still consider a novelty, even though we already had like however many generations of them. And um, as uh, Marquez always says in his videos, uh, good ch good phones are getting cheap, and cheap phones are getting good, or something, something. Yeah. But, Again, not really applicable to the foldable phones at this point yet. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, in the camera department, basically, that mm, all cameras yeah, that's, are. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That uh, that's what I meant, basically. Uh. Yeah. All right. So. I guess we'll see. It's already happening in like two weeks. Yeah. This is actually yeah, yeah in uh two and a half weeks or something. Yeah. Two and, two and a half weeks. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I guess we'll see. All right. Next up, we have a piece of Apple news. Yes. Uh, about the rumored, but also sort of confirmed, uh, the VR AR headset that they're going to announce apparently at WWDC. Yeah, Apple is not making a folding uh, phone. Maybe that is true. And they are that's completely true. like, no, VR and AR. That's our thing. We don't play around with the folding. That is a very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Thing. Like Apple is like officially now the last. Yeah. At this point, I also kind of even think they may be not very particularly interested in foldable phones at all. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe they will like release one as a flex. Yeah. Uh, no, they uh, will release a folding uh, Apple Watch. Mm -hmm. 
a watch that like unfolds into like a phone yeah. size. Yeah. 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 Like uh, but they did say that they believe strongly that wearables are the next big thing, not phones, right? Yeah. So this sort of it makes a lot of sense for them to like push this one out of the gate and see what happens and then like iterate on that thing. Yeah, yeah. Especially when Tim Cook uses glasses also. That's that's Yeah, that's true. His his personal I mean, goal is like no, no. Yeah, yeah. We that's need his personal project. Yeah. My we need glasses, man. <clears throat> Yeah. So, um, so what is there to talk about? Well, the big one is the price, but we'll get there uh, later. Mm. Uh, so this is brought by Mark German, which is a Bloomberg's uh, like analyst, and he's pretty like reliable when it comes to Apple uh, rumors. Yep. Um. So what I found interesting is that Apple is working with developers to make sure that the headset has a huge amount of apps to use. And what I found interesting is that the way they are talking about it, like most of the apps that exist on the App Store will be usable with it somehow. They will be like slightly adjusted to the VR mode. Yeah. But basically, you will just be able to interface with them yeah. as you would uh, on your phone or laptop, but mm -hmm. in VR. Which is very interesting. Not really. I'm not sure if that's exactly how I would want. AR tech to be, I feel like you kind of need bespoke, uh, like you know, design like you know from yeah. design apps to take advantage of like the fact that you're using a you know a AR technology and it's not just like oh you're like staring at like a Instagram feed but like in 3D, you know that's just is not some particularly exciting to me. Yeah, but that's what it seems like they're going for. And for example, they were saying that, oh, you'll be able to use Apple TV app, right? And using Apple TV will be basically you looking at a virtual screen, mm -hmm. which I assume will be just levitating. And you'll be able to like watch a movie in like a forest or something. Like the, the, the environment around you would be like vr into like some kind of environment, mm -hmm. like a forest mm -hmm. or a desert. But you'll be like just watching your Apple TV movie or show just like on a flat display that will be just like levitating in front of you or something. Yeah. Very, very interesting. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure if it sounds exciting. Uh, but because like the question then is like, why? <sighs> if I can just like watch that on my TV, <laughs> you know? In my living room. Like I don't need to be in a forest. Yeah, to yeah. But again a lot of this is for the people who are like uh commuting to work probably every, uh, an hour a day or something or maybe for, okay. for those people something again so those people would be interested in like putting on a headset on a train yeah this is a or watching a movie while they are in a desert pretending that they're not on a train yeah, yeah. Well, that, I don't know. It's kind of a tough I, sell, I feel like. It, this is a niche group that... Yeah, yeah. yeah. This. Well, it is niche because we will get to the price in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically, that's how they are like pushing it for now. It's going to be a first-gen device, obviously. So it's going to be... Probably going to be rough, like I imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, the software support is probably going to be rough. Even if it's like an Apple, you know, polished or whatever, you know, software. Yeah. Um, what I also found interesting is they want to make uh, Apple Fitness Plus available on this device. Mm -hmm. Which, okay, how do you feel about this? Uh, because we yeah. sort of know that the the device they're going to announce is not, oh, not announced, but like, no, released. It's not going to be like a glasses moment, right? It's going to be more like a VR headset moment. Mm -hmm. Well, they, the, the they other glasses are... They're working on both, but the VR one is coming first. Yeah. So it's going to be like a full-on like helmet moment, like you would expect from a VR mm -hmm. headset. Yeah. And I don't know how I feel about working out wearing one of those. That sounds terrible. Yeah. The, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. The, there are people, again, Linus, Linus from Linus Tech Tips. He's working out to Beat Saber, the video game. Um, in VR all the time. Yeah, but 
and a lot of people are, but yeah, the, it gets sweaty. That's the biggest one of the biggest problems. Also, the it gets really sweaty, and and yeah, uh, you would get sweaty while just not doing anything, while just like being in VR and playing mm-hmm. with the controller. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yes, no Beat Saber, I guess, sort of is like in that especially, working out sort of. Yeah, category. especially when uh, the headsets require uh, like a pretty pretty beefy PC right next to you also, uh, working pretty hard. Mm, yeah. To push like, to push yeah. like, uh, high frame rates with, uh, very fast, basically to two displays, which are very high, like both 1440p and at least, yeah, at least probably higher than that. Yeah. Yeah. I would imagine an Apple's one will be even higher. Yeah. 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 For- um, Okay, but still, okay, but Beat Saber is Beat Saber. Yeah. But like if we're talking about Fitness Plus, I'm thinking like full on like yoga routines or something. Mm-hmm. So can you imagine like a person like in their living room? It's just, it's just a lot. It's just a lot. Yeah. And like, you, know, you know, they will try to like, you know, they will start marketing, of course, for that and everything. So they will, you know, typical marketing that like will be like, you know, mm-hmm. the family or something like doing whatever. Uh, body jam or whatever the fuck mm-hmm. and of course they'll make it look very nice and cool and amazing but like you you know that like it's gonna be very uncomfortable and sweaty yeah and again we haven't even gotten to the price yet but before we get to the price uh so apple uh, will sort of angle it as a productivity focused device similarly to meta's quest pro Oh, nice. So it'll have integration with Pages, Numbers, Keynotes, all of that. iMovie, GarageBand. No, but nobody knows how that will work. Hopefully it will just, again, more than just like a flat screen floating in front of you and you will just touch it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, collaboration. Uh, they will allow you, uh, people to create users, uh, like uh, avatars. So a bit of a bit of a metaverse there. Mm-hmm. Uh, FaceTime calls and like a you know a three D virtual space, all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they also push it as a gaming device, which I, of course is interesting. They they have to tick the box. Uh, like we have also gaming, yes, of course. I it, suppose they have to, yeah. Because even though they don't have like no three yeah. D games ever right now. But, but yeah, they I will. mean, I don't know a single VR. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, of course, there isn't because there's no VR on macOS, but yeah. I guess they will try to. I mean, I guess there is some. Yeah, there's. Uh, whatever happened to the, those Lego demos that they did in a 3D environment and. Yeah. Looked really cool. At the time, I was like, what? Okay. Dev. In years, we haven't seen anything like this anymore. Yeah. 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 So All right. It will have a digital crown that will allow you to switch between VR and AR modes. Yep. Uh, all of that. It will you allow you to control it with your eyes, or at least to some extent, control it with your eyes. Uh, control it with hand gesture, virtual keyboards, compatibility with physical keyboards, all that kind of stuff. Um, and it will also be integrated with Siri. Mm-hmm. And an eye scan for security, which is interesting. I mean, I guess it's not interesting. I mean, it's basically face ID, but for the retina scan. Yeah. That is kind of interesting. I mean, that's not been done before in... Uh... Yeah. All right. So we are uh, we are at the most interesting part, which is the price. Yes. Uh, so... Previously, I mentioned that they are positioning it as a sort of competitor to the MetaQuest Pro. Mm-hmm. And will you remind us uh, what was the MSRP on that when it launched? It already got a price cut recently, right? Uh, yeah. Um, but if my memory is not... Uh, 1,000. Yeah, that's like what it costs right now. Yep. Right? Uh, I think it was 1,500 at launch. Is that correct? Mm, maybe. Wait. Uh, maybe. 
500. Yep, it says 1500. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, which is crazy, like crazy expensive, but not out of the realm of possibility because, like, for something like Valve Index, oh. uh, also costs around a thousand dollars, right? Oh, cheers, Michael. I have to rewatch tomorrow, hitting two science cocktails. Very nice. It, yeah, uh, by the way, uh, just for context, science and cocktails is a like a once a month event in Denmark, in Copenhagen, that uh. Like, uh, imagine TED, a TED talk with cocktails, basically, which is... That sounds lovely. Yeah, sounds pretty... That was pretty good. Yeah. Enjoy, Mikkel. Yeah, have some nice... Um... Knowledge what? and cocktails. Oh, I was going to say, uh, like, margaritas or something. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, so the price... So the rumored price for this headset is three thousand dollars. Yes, yes, yes. So, so talk talk about niche. Yeah, it's like a niche within a niche. Mm-hmm. Even if you um, can't afford like a thousand uh, euro headset, yep, it's not for you because it's three thousand. That is crazy. Yeah. That's the price of the well, the PC that I got. Yeah, entire PC and this yeah. is just a headset mm -hmm. with floating with floating Apple TV. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we'll see. Uh, yeah, I guess we don't have much to, long to longer to wait, right? WWDC is also happening soon, right? In, In June. June, yeah. So uh, we have to we have to live uh, if that's what they're gonna show mm -hmm. at WWDC. We have to live cover it. Oh, absolutely. I'll take a day off for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and do we know the date for that? Uh, I don't think... Oh, okay. no. Uh, no, there was an announcement, I think, uh, 2023. Yeah, 5th of June. 5th okay. of... Uh, oh, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, they did. Ah, yeah, yeah, they yeah, did, like, uh, uh, it's going to be... Like a like a yeah fifth of June until the ninth of June, but uh, so this is what they announced. Who knows if they're gonna do like a stage announcement? But probably they usually do like probably on the fifth of June they do like a stage announcement and then they quietly update some stuff on the background and all the people that came to the event or something. Then they. Because I saw, yeah, yeah, I saw like uh, physical events also going out to some YouTubers that are going to the event. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. special event at Apple Park, blah, blah. That's where the people are going. Let's go. I'm going to yeah. be on vacation so we can live stream it definitely. Mm hmm. Uh, all right, let's move on. Yeah, let's move on. Let's pick up the pace. Uh, yeah. This is a cool piece of news. Uh, so the world's leading battery maker announces a new line of batteries with super high energy density. That's actually, yeah, I, I almost included the story last week, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I was afraid that this would be maybe a little bit too boring to, me, uh, to you, but now you confirmed like, okay, this is actually interesting to you. All right. Yeah. So the cattle. Yeah, yeah. CATL or Contemporary Empirics Technology Company mm -hmm. uh, announced a 500 million million uh, oh. 500 uh, kilowatt hour, right? Yes. Uh, by Lotus Film, per I have to go. Light no, lightning me. batteries are the future. Yes. Light lightning batteries. You mean Apple batteries? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. You were right all along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so basically, they announced that the battery will enter mass production soon, or like this year. Mm -hmm. It will have a density of 500 watt hour per kilogram. Yes. Which is almost twice the density of Tesla's. Uh, cells yeah. for 680. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are. I assume they're using 
in their cars, right? Their cars, yeah. And uh, they 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 wanted to use them also in the home batteries, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty in- intense to to produce those batteries, but because it's like actually not not easy, and uh, the, that's why nobody is basically doing like. But Tesla is pretty pretty much leading in terms of like how many watt hours you can fit into a tiny space, basically. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess not anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's why Tesla cars are pretty much the ray. Uh, how far you can go with a car, basically the one of the best like uh, out there. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, CATL is coming from them. Yeah. Yeah. So. What this means, basically, uh, the way I understood it, is it would enable a lot of things that uh, were previously not possible to, like, do uh, with, like, you know, Mm -hmm. were not possible to power by electricity, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, as one of the examples I use is to power a commercial flight. Mm. So power a plane with a battery, or probably like a number of batteries, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but basically, a battery of this density would would technically make it possible for flying to become to like to have rechargeable planes, basically. Yeah. Which is huge, especially for uh, you know for environment. Mm-hmm. Imagine I... a world where all the flights of all the planes are you know, on rechargeable batteries. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exciting, honestly. Considering how, how many flies per day happen. Everything. And, you know, this, if if you can in- increase the density of, uh, of battery powers, then everything changes. The cars, every transportation basically yeah. will be way better uh, because, yeah, um, you could because if you if you can fit like a lot of energy into a small space, pff, changes everything. Even uh, yep. I I was thinking basically the the, the e scooters uh, around the city mm-hmm. right now, they are pretty good, but they the range is way what I would I would say not really acceptable if you want to actually transport yourself from work and back and do a, like a grocery trip or something also in the in between then it's like because they they usually have like 20 30 kilometers or something depending on where you live blah 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 it's mostly urban it's only like if you need, if you just have because again the, depending on how heavy you yourself are and if how many groceries you pack on your so- shoulders and then the range is like okay i have to work basically twice as hard and uh, it's like okay you get 10 kilometers that's it and then it's okay. the battery is dead and you can't really go back home because yeah anyway yeah so this will be a huge help in terms of like everyday like e-scooter transportation or something or e-bike or yeah anything yeah Cars and everything. I mean, yeah, I guess te- technically it would also make it possible to make higher density, like smaller batteries. Yeah. In the future, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This, so, yeah, yeah. If you have, if you, I'm recently, uh, I'm just right now looking into a home battery, basically for my mm-hmm. mom and uh, the tower. It's as tall as me, basically. That mm-hmm. uh, and twice the size of that battery. <laughs> I'll take it. Sure. If it's the, if this is like basically the same uh, watt hours but twice as small, sold. Yeah, sounds pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like good news all around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but yeah, the production is the biggest. Yeah. Uh, hurdle that they have to overcome. Yeah, this is this is exciting to me also. Yeah. Well, they seem confident. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, let's... All right, now we are 
not yet, but we are sort of approaching the, we are in the European news segment and mm-hmm. approaching the AI segment, and they're overlapping this uh, this week. Yeah. So first off, it's uh, okay. The next couple of stories are kind of dense. I would maybe even maybe we should link, especially like the not the next one, but the one after that article in the description because it's huge and it's about like a bunch of stuff. Okay. Uh, but the next article is about the European Union Cyber Resilience Act, which is a piece of legislation that is currently being worked on in the European Commission, uh, mm-hmm. and will pass. You know, will it will it will move to like a Parliament discussion soon? And I th- I think they said they want to, uh, like, <laughs> adopt it relatively soon. So what is it about, basically? Uh, it's about ensuring the cybersecurity, basically, in the EU. And mm-hmm. it concerns all the different, um, uh, basically, smart devices or connected devices that have an internet component in them. Yeah. Inter- which is a huge number uh, nowadays from, like, you know. Yeah, Internet of Things <laughs> devices. Yeah, yeah, the Internet of Things devices, but here they call them connected devices, basically. Mm-hmm. So anything from like a smart fridge mm-hmm. to a smart, I don't know, lights, locks and stuff. And basically... The I idea... have all of them. Yeah. yeah. Locks, lights so... and the fridge. Yeah. So this is very, uh, very topical mm-hmm. for you. So what the EU is proposing is that in order to ensure the cybersecurity of the European Union in the future, the manufacturers of these devices need to ensure to make sure that these devices are robust and uh, receive security updates regularly over a long period of time, which is, I'm assuming, not what happens, what is happening nowadays, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Depends on the manufacturer how how honest they are and how by the code and uh, by the rules they play. But yeah, it's I mean it's a it's a huge world out there and uh, everybody has their own rules or guidelines. Yeah, exactly, pretty much. Uh, so this legislation is meant to bring everyone sort of to the same. On the same level, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and therein lies this problem. So the article is about the group of open source industry, uh, like the companies, uh, banded together and wrote an open letter to the European Commission, uh, saying that the proposed legislation in this current form is not good for the industry, and can have damaging uh, implications. Because a lot of the software that is used in these smart devices is developed by open source, uh, you know, small companies, basically. And um, many of them simply just wouldn't, it wouldn't be feasible for them to do that, to fulfill these requirements. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so what would have to happen then is it would have to, for the manufacturers of this, of the hardware, I imagine they would have to also then have software departments where they would develop custom software and yeah. Yeah. have these departments support these devices with regular updates over however many years, you know, five years, 10 years. I mean, mm-hmm. I nobody really knows uh, what's the period that we're looking at. Yeah. But I mean, these all are consumer devices that are meant to last for a long time, right? I mean, lock, slides, fridges, uh, so yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. So this group, uh, including Linux, for instance, L- Linux is one of the signees of this letter, said that uh, the open source software developers should be represented, and like uh, should be part of the conversation, uh, mm-hmm. because uh, if uh, yeah, if the proposed legislation will pass the way that it is, or in the in the future conversation. Uh, the lawmakers will just, you know, negotiate themselves or with participation of large, you know, corporations and lobbies, then it can, uh, yeah, really damage the um, smaller companies, smaller, like, uh, IT companies that make softwares for these things. 
Uh, I'm yeah. not sure, though. I mean... I mean, you kind of... I mean, in terms... If we are talking about longevity and, you know... Uh, stable, stable, like updating uh, firmware and security updates. You kind of probably want these manufacturers to have their own internal teams responsible for software, right? Uh, yeah, but that's again. This is also behind. Like, do they have the money to have this kind of a team, and do they have the? Do they take software seriously? Some companies are like, eh, we are a hardware company. We have now. We don't care about software or something, something we m more focus on, on hardware. Like it's all over the place, but yeah, this is as far as I can, t uh, I can tell basically Europe is like, no, you kind of have to do the software also because otherwise you risk all of our data because you need to have some kind of a security in place. Right. And, uh, otherwise we don't allow you on the EU market, something, something. Yeah. Because yeah, the, the, the companies that have their own, like, how can we harvest the data, the cheapest of the people or something? And, uh, without taking any maybe investments into the security and how to protect the data or something, because we're, we're in China and they're in Europe. So we don't care something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. As I understand, this legislation is still quite early. Yeah. I was saying that it needs to pass soon, but I was confusing with the next story. But the cybersecurity mm. one, I think there's just a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of like red tape to go through, right? And. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it kind of seems like a, not a bad idea for them to like actually like take uh, into consideration like a, you know, small open source because just. You know, that's just kind of the nature of the market. Mm -hmm. So if you don't, uh, you know, take into account the reality of the market and try to like change it, basically, because yeah. it will have to change if uh, the legislation passes that in the way that uh, it is today. It can yeah. scroll over a huge number of different IT companies. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and now we are entering the AI segment. Yeah. Alrighty. So first, um, again, EU is sort of leading the way in regulating the AI mm -hmm. technology, basically. Uh, this is the one that it, they are actually wanting to to vote on by the end of this year. And the article is huge, and it's uh, basically covers most of like what the EU is envisioning for the uh, you know uh, uh, regulating the AI industry. Mm -hmm. And I feel like yeah, I guess it makes sense if they want to uh, do it by the end of the year because it feels like it has this sort of urgency. To yeah. It because of how fast the AI is moving, like basically uh, month after month, you know, we see like big developments one way or another. Mm -hmm. uh, but to summarize, what they're proposing is basically, uh, well, they aren't exactly talking about what measures will be implemented, but basically they want to differentiate AI into three categories. And depending on which category they fall on, they would have different guidelines and regulations they need to follow. So you would have a... Um, uh, uh, where's the... I missed the thing. Uh, uh, no. Ah, okay. Wait, no. Oh, where is it? I just had it. I this, just had the line. This just is... the names. Just the names of the three groups. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is exactly me every week, also. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, uh, so the, the three groups will be the general purpose AIs, mm -hmm. the foundational models, and the uh, and the uh, the generative AIs, basically. Mm -hmm. So a general purpose AI is basically the things we already have. Uh, you would like AI assistance, uh, text, voice, image recognition to attack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
so, so Google lenses, all this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so the foundational models, as I understood, are the AIs that are specifically designed for some certain purpose. Uh, so you would have like a company train uh, the AI by like dumping whatever like a body of information. Mm -hmm. uh, so it would train in a specific field. Yeah. Uh, to be like a customer service, basically AI or something like that. But they also have the capacity to apply the knowledge that they learned mm -hmm. and repurpose it for a different thing if they need to, basically. Yeah. So you can be trained as like a customer service AI, and then you are like, I don't know, you are then the company pivots into some other direction, and they can basically retrain it sort of mm -hmm. while using at least some portion of the, uh, you know, the database that they fed for the new purpose. Yeah. And then the third one, which is, I guess, the most controversial is the generative AI. So the things that we talk about every week about like image generation, voice generation, uh, music generation, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And they talked about it the most in terms of like what that would be, because basically uh, they say that uh, the manufacturers, well, not manufacturers, but like the creators of these generative AIs would have to then set certain parameters for the AIs uh, so that they wouldn't uh, like sort of Editing, sort of changing what content they can and cannot generate. Mm, so yeah, you know, so they wouldn't be able to generate or like use copyrighted content as the like data for the generation or certain like types of content that would be not allowed to generate. Whatever it can be, like I don't know. Insert whatever it can be, like AI generated pornography or I don't know, like whatever AI generated. Uh, maybe deep fakes or something like that, you know, would not be allowed using likeness of people and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the article is huge. And this, uh, there's also a bigger, uh, thing on the, you know, the European commission's, uh, website. So maybe, maybe after that, we can put it also like, because it's kind of interesting and nobody else is really doing it. I feel like, mm -hmm. I, will. Uh, I mean, like in terms of like, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, regulating it. I will put it in the chat. So then uh, it, then it's on the time timestamp uh, is also that we are talking about it also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so it's interesting to see what they come up with because I mean, somebody has to like start somewhere and again, considering how fast the AI is moving. Yeah. I mean, uh, it may already be too late. Like uh, we should have been done yesterday, but you know, yep. uh, I guess something is being done. Yep. Absolutely agree. Yeah, this is moving way too fast for lawmakers. Yeah. Yeah. Especially for like EU lawmakers, it's like EU is already <laughs> slow. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. The the when first it comes to very basic things that need to be regulated. Yeah, the first reaction is like Italy, like oh no, just ban it, just ban it because we can't keep it up, we can't uh, keep up with it basically. So yeah, just block everything. Yeah, but it's true. Yeah, yeah. It's True, yeah, yeah. You can't just like, you know, do it in a week, basically. Mm -hmm. mm, and on or... the subject of generative AI, the next article is just sort of uh, just 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 the next one in the big line of articles that we've covered already. Yeah. Where uh, an AI generated content did something. In this case, won in a prestigious photography award. Mm -hmm. So you can see this is the picture that was AI generated. And the German photographer Boris Eldaksen submitted it for uh, a uh, photo photography, uh, whatever award like mm -hmm. competition, basically. Yeah, yeah, contest. <clears throat> yep. Um, and uh, they won the contest with this picture, mm -hmm. basically. That was the conclusion, and they uh, refused to take the prize. And they said that the the only reason why they did that and submitted this picture to the or like why they even set out to make this picture and submit it was to spark the conversation about what is photography and mm -hmm. is AI photography or photography and stuff like that. It is a good picture. Uh, fun fact: 
uh, Eldaxon suggested donating the price to a photo festival hosted in Odessa, Ukraine. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Fun fact. Yeah. Um. But but yeah, I feel like this conversation is not happening long enough. I mean, it is a pretty picture, mm -hmm. but it's also very clearly. I mean, to me at least, it's not photography, right? Like yeah, that the about. blur on the second woman on the neck, and there's a. Yeah, there, there, there's a little bit to be like this. This type of uh, era pictures don't have like a usually this kind of a blur usually, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is kind of hmm okay, because it's either like you don't see you, yeah, yeah, because the the background is non-existent. I I feel like in this photo, but yeah, but uh, yeah, but this isn't an old picture. It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, yeah, yeah. But it's like sort of meant to imitate, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a vintage photo. But that's, uh, yeah. But now I'm curious if the all the who voted to be this this the the winner picture that some maybe because most people they've, I mean, some people definitely like looked at this and were like hmm is this a real picture or is this just an ai picture or something and they were yeah it's a good picture and i will vote for it but yeah so how many people knew that they voted for an ai picture i'm curious basically uh, i mean how do, how many people did you yeah yeah that they were voting for a picture yeah I mean, I don't, I don't know. If this is a, like a snobbish photography competition, then I don't feel like any of them probably did. Because if they did, they wouldn't vote for it, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, that's like the point of the conversation. Uh, because they thought there was a picture and it wasn't. Um, Maybe. That's the point. Um, but yeah. It's very, very interesting. Very interesting. Because the picture was, well, quote unquote, made by an actual photographer right mm -hmm. like they were you know uh, yeah they like set up the ai to come up with this picture yeah, yeah. but again it's not a photograph of anything mm -hmm. so so yeah well that was the point yes so i guess that yeah again this is also a conversation in in not just in photography but like in, a, in like you know in just any kind of visual art or not even visual like any kind of artistic field that needs to be happening like yesterday basically about like where what place ai can take in uh in arts right yeah because it will because it already exists right so there's no way it wouldn't uh what um, what place will ai take in the world uh apparently the first one mm -hmm. because winning <laughs> yeah 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 that's true in another article that i didn't put uh put on the list but uh, basically uh these AI tools are now writing like a college level uh, essays, yeah, which yeah. are good. Like they're basically, you know, of course you probably would have to edit them somehow, but they're basically like bespoke essays that you can submit to an actual professor. And they will, oh yeah, sure, that's like, I mean, you know, unless you just like copy paste it basically, but you know, if you know what to look for and do your reference and stuff like that, yeah, it will just be a an essay that exists, and you didn't you didn't need to write it. Uh, so yeah, Wild West yeah. Uh, is happening right now, basically in the space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we, we have also reported uh, on a on a different photo that was also winning an art competition a few mm -hmm. months back. That uh, uh, I feel like it wasn't a photo; it was like a digital painting. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Like a painting, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I think at some point there was also an. A photo also which was an, a third story way back but but yeah doesn't matter uh but yeah this is the latest in the in the sony world photography awards was the name of so the pretty, pretty big deal so yeah 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 i imagine the juries of that uh competition are like you know the real deal it's not just mm -hmm. like some tiktokers or something um so yeah it's very interesting yeah because it is a good picture right i mean it's you know in the in a, in a classical sense of it, this word uh if we, if we if we remove the ai component of it like people would describe it as art right basically yeah if this was a picture taken by a person with people 
Yeah, yeah. But it's not. So therefore, the conversation is needed to decide whether it is art or not, whether it is photography or not, mm -hmm. and so on. So yeah, I... absolutely. <clears throat> oh. Alrighty. Uh, I feel like, I don't know, yeah, the next story is still sort of... Oh yeah, the next stories are still sort of AI adjacent. Mm -hmm. um, basically, uh, it's, it's hard to tell how serious this is, or if it was just more like a sort of... Um, A trick, I guess, on Samsung's side. But basically, the story is such that at some point, Samsung uh, considered or may be considering dumping Google search in favor of Bing. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, uh, did, did we? I, I can't remember. I didn't. Uh, I definitely saw the story, but I didn't. I don't know if we. I, I don't remember if it included in. Maybe the last week, but maybe not. Okay, yeah. Well, maybe uh, this is from 17th of April. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. When did uh, our last stream happen? Uh, Saturday, no, right? Yeah, but uh, s different news outlets uh, yeah, post. That's true. That's true. Uh, they, they, some post some news way earlier than others, and yeah, it's weird. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This was This is absolutely happening. Samsung uh, is like, hmm, is Google the best player? Or something is Google slowly dying? Yeah. Yeah. And this, of course, is the only reason why this is happening is because Microsoft invested in ChatGPT and <laughs> to be integrated with Bing. Mm -hmm. So it's not entirely crazy to think that at some point, and very soon, Bing will be an actual competitor or a superior search engine to Google. Yeah which is crazy to think about. So, of course, it makes sense, you know, for a company like Samsung that doesn't have its own search engine thing yep. to look for the best option, right? And that's just sort of natural, I feel like, for a, for a hardware company, or, I mean, Samsung is not really a hardware company. Mm -hmm. Hardware software company. Um, but, yeah, very interesting. Google will be sweating uh, because Google pays Samsung for the privilege of being the default search engine on the phones. Yep. Uh, according to the article, about three and a half billion dollars per year. Mm-hmm. And uh, and also Apple and also and also Apple. And yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah, it's the very next line in the articles. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Apple pays also twenty billion. Yeah, yeah, and that's why. Uh, no, Apple doesn't pay. Google pays Apple. Well, yeah, yeah, that. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. Uh, that's why. Also, mm, because Apple is the kind of company that they all they like to have the control and to have the data, and they they ha it has been rumored for years now that they want to also make a search engine, basically, right now. But right now, with the ChatGPT and with the Microsoft thing, it became way harder to stay competitive, right? Yeah, oh, man. Much, yeah. yeah, yeah. So who knows what what those plans are right now going? Um. Yeah. Yeah. And directly in, uh, related to the this article is another reason for Google to sweat because their own chatbot is quote unquote useless or sorry worse than useless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that also. Yeah. Um. So, in case people, I mean, I feel like we talked about it last week, right? That they have their own uh, Bard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have talked chatbot. about Bard many times. Yeah. Yeah, which they also uh, sort of basically pushed out the gate, right? Is it publicly available or is it like in some sort of preview form? Yeah, it's uh, in preview. But you can use okay. it, yeah. But it's a beta, no? A preview, beta, yeah. Yeah. So according to certain sources, uh, multiple Google employees warned the executives at the company that BARD is too underbaked basically mm -hmm. to be released in any form. 
uh, reason being for one that Bard is described as a pathological liar. Yeah. Which can completely misinform you with yep. a complete sense of certainty in its right, uh, righteousness. Mm -hmm. uh, which is, can be funny, I mean, mostly, but also kind of, because I feel like, you know, relying on chatbots for the reliability of the information, maybe like, I don't know, maybe it's too early. But I mean, I guess for ChatGPT, it's sort of not early. You can totally, like, you know, ask them for information, I feel like, and be relatively confident. Unless it's some, like, very, like, arcane, like, you know, niche information. Um, but, on top of lying to, uh, to users, um, Bart was known to reportedly give advice which would likely result in serious injury or death for multiple users. Mm -hmm. For different activities, such as scuba diving or uh, flying a plane. Mm -hmm. So that's fun. So that is fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because. And the, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No. Yeah, go go ahead. Uh, yeah, because yeah, we have reported also because Bard is like basically a joke compared to ChatGPT right now, and uh, it it was very funny to me that uh, Google even released like a shorts video on YouTube how to use Bard, and I was like, really. Okay, maybe make your service like, or like maybe make Bard like useful and then like promote it uh, all the way on YouTube. But right now it's like they they can't even do like any examples uh, because they are not that confident on the on the in uh, in the in Bard. So they just do like okay, if you want to use it, do this and uh, like an introduction how to how to get the the beta basically running on your phone. Mm -hmm. They're not even promoting what it can it can do. Because it can't it can't do anything right now. Mm -hmm. Because it sucks. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So multiple Google employees uh uh well communicated that information to the executives and of course in a classical tradition of capitalism executives ignored the employees' uh, concerns and released it anyway. Granted, in a limited capacity or like a preview capacity, but still. Mm -hmm. uh, because, of course, they feel like they have to, right? Because everyone else, well, not everyone else, but ChatGPT specifically is like way ahead of the curve in that sense. Yeah. So, yeah. Good stuff, Google. Yeah. And, yeah. I feel like this ends our serious segment for now. All right. Now I have I just put a couple couple like uh, small stories we can just jump through quickly. Yeah. So you may remember how we previously talked about how Gen Gen Zs and millennials are ruining uh, industries, right? Yeah. Like uh, what was it like? Um, furs, golf. What was it else? Like jewelry, right? A lot of industries that were ruined by uh, millennials and Gen Zs. Mm -hmm. uh, so we may be on a cusp of another industry being ruined by millennials and Gen Zs people, and that is, you wouldn't believe it, the streaming industry. Mm -hmm. What? So the article is basically that new data reveals that younger subscribers are a lot more likely to cancel their subscriptions. Uh, in light of raising uh, living costs and inflation. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's basically the article. I can confirm. I am one of those people. Yeah, yeah. Same here. So, I, also, I guess we're both young. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I am like the... Uh, according to the internet, of course. The yeah. internet wouldn't lie. Mm. I'm like the youngest possible millennial. So I'm like on the cusp of Gen Z. But mm. still millennial. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, like uh, we are subscribed from Netflix a long time ago, and like this past month, uh, we are not subscribed to any streaming service at all. Oh, yeah. really? Okay, I didn't know that. Okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah, what's so the? Watching. Yeah, what's what's the plan then? Uh, the plan is that we're finishing the last of us yeah. tomorrow, and uh, I also have a free, well, free subscription to Apple TV. Ah. Because uh, I have a still have a student uh, Apple Music subscription, which comes with free Apple TV. 
Ah. Basically. And I think I'm going to lose it uh, maybe like in a month or two. Okay. Because they're going to catch up to the fact that I'm no longer a student. Yep. Uh, so we decided to... <laughs> you have to catch up to the reality. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, uh, they have to. Yeah. Uh, so we decided to use this opportunity to watch some Apple TV shows uh, next month. Mm-hmm. I really want to watch Ted Lasso, and there's there's a bunch of like uh, cool stuff. Maurice wants to watch that Tetris uh, movie that came out like a couple weeks ago. Hmm. Um. So yeah, and after that, I don't know. We'll see. But basically, the way that we do it nowadays is just if we do want to subscribe and watch something, we just do it like one at a time. Basically, we just yeah. decide that like okay, for this month we are subscribing to like Amazon and watching this show. And whatever else we may have, uh, you know, that we may want to watch before the month expires. And then the next month, we subscribe to something else. Because realistically speaking, you like, you only have so much time in your life mm -hmm. to watch stuff. Yep. So having multiple subscriptions is largely uh, redundant. Uh, unless you sit at home and just chill. Yeah. You know. I... Which is possible, but like, you know. For two adults, so it's kind of, yeah, redundant. Yeah. And imagine um, having a child. Yeah. No. But, oh, my God. Well, if a child is all old enough, they can also benefit from it as well, well. Yeah. in that sense. But, yeah, if you have a baby, then it's like, yeah. But, but, but yeah, if if the child is old enough, to, then she is even more demanding what she wants to watch. And she doesn't watch to, uh, want to watch for the 69th time the Stargate SG-1 or something. And, yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It is sort of interesting because I was actually thinking about it. I feel like the public sentiment is kind of shifting on streaming services a bit. Mm. Because they become, I mean, as usually happens, mm -hmm. the episode has happened and every company decided that they need a separate streaming service for their own content and, you know, fragment the market uh, the way that, you know, yep. it happened before with television, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's... So we're kind of coming full circle. Yeah, yeah. And people already kind of turned on the cable, right? I feel yep. like. I mean, of course, many people still use it, but mm -hmm. again, younger people, I guess, kind of turned on the cable. Yeah. With not with streaming, not share the same fate. Yeah, yeah, Pro yeah. But it's getting because all the streaming services now are basically all together are as as expensive as the cable was you know, at least in the US so it's like we have come come that in terms of price we have also come in for full circle because netflix netflix was the one like oh yeah i don't know 9.99 and you can watch everything basically mm -hmm. and now it's like it's not even yeah. 9.99 it's like 16 and you yeah, you yeah. don't even have everything anymore so mm -hmm. yeah. and then the show gets canceled yeah and and the point it, even yeah and you have ads and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you can't so, yeah. do sharing passwords anymore. And yeah. Mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm. The classic, you know. Yeah, as I said, capitalism happened and everything went to shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Do you die a hero or do you lo live long enough to become the villain or something, something? Yeah. I mean, they're all villains at this point. Yeah, yeah. Fact, we're in a dark timeline. Because they have been... Uh, uh, around long enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. And like they have been tempted, but, but funny, you know, we see that a lot in like games industry as well, because like they all are convinced that their streaming service will be the big thing, right? But like, yep. if you have such a saturated market at this point, mm -hmm. not everyone can be the big thing, right? That's just not possible. Unless, of course, you are in a market where people would just subscribe to everything, right? Which is somewhat possible, you know, like, for example, in the U.S. market. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, again, cable. So it's sort of like, I guess, more ingrained in the fabric of, like, consumerism in the U.S. Yeah. But, like, in most other places, people don't have the mental capacity or money capacity <laughs> to, like, subscribe to multiple streaming services at a time. Yeah, yeah. So chances are that you will not be the big thing. The big thing is usually the first thing, and everyone else is just sort of like, okay. I guess Disney is an exception because they own everything. So they kind of are the big thing, just 
by the virtue of existing, right? And being mm-hmm. Disney. Um, but I guess we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. But we're definitely past the point where I feel. I feel like yeah. Also, the golden era of television is now over. I was saying that like the early streaming era. I feel like it was the golden era of TV. Mm-hmm. Because there was so much content and so much of it was so good because they were competing for attention. But now it's just like, okay, well, business models, you know, pricings, ads, you know, let's lock 4K behind the uh, highest tier, you know, all this bullshit. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And the content is now just mostly just like safe, right? It's just, oh, well, people mm-hmm. like this thing on Netflix, so we'll renew this for 10 more seasons and cancel like 10 other shows that may be more interesting, but did not, you know, uh, take the world by storm. Mm-hmm. Well, it's fine. I mean, yeah. there's still enough good TV to watch until the end of times, anyway. So. Yeah, exactly. It's you, all good. You can still watch Bold and the Beautiful until you. Yeah, that's true. Until... That's, I mean, do do we need anything else? Honestly. Yeah. If exactly. we are if we are honest with ourselves. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's move on. We have one one more actual story. Uh, yeah. Is that Netflix will stop. Uh, <laughs> Renting out DVDs. Yes, I saw that also. So, oh boy, where do I even begin with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, Uh, so the big news here right now is like, this was a thing still. Right. It still is actually a thing, yeah? Yeah, Until the end of September 2023. Mm Mm-hmm. They will provide their DVD rental service, which is how Netflix started. Yep. Uh, I'm not exactly clear on the details of how it works. Uh... Basically, you... it's like uh, your typical rental store. Yeah. Except that it's online and you get a DVD by mail. Uh, yes, you can go to the. I think. Oh yeah. Uh, da, 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 it, it will point out on DVD DVD dot com. Mhm. Mhm. I haven't. I don't. I think I have ever go gone to dvd.com. dvd.com? Let's all go oh. to dvd.com. Oh, this is gone. Oh, wait. Does exne- doesn't exist with a verb. Uh, 10 seconds. DVD Ooh. next. It doesn't exist. Is this already maybe. dead or is this because I'm not in US or something? Well, maybe. I mean, this is, yeah, this is a US exclusive feature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So since this, since this launch in 1998, Netflix mm-hmm. has mailed over 5.2 billion movies. Uh, yeah, and they they uh they just they just uh, send them in an envelope. Mm-hmm. And they sent them to 40 million customers across the U.S. Yeah. So that's yeah. pretty wild. Yeah. Kind of. Uh, I mean, at the time, I mean. In, sort of forward thinking right Mm -hmm. like a rental service which was i imagine massively popular in 1998 yeah which was Um, met with huge like uh blockbuster was basically like go ahead try we we are the dominant player in this space like there's this new upcoming young netflix thing do what you do go ahead kids make our day or something and uh, the, and then now blockbuster is full circle like oh, sweet vengeance or something but blockbuster is not a thing anymore is it yeah, yeah it, it's done it's done yeah. yeah yeah but but right now they 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 were the 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 uh the big uh, monopolistic like uh, company that had all the market and now it's like that, that now they're the they were the underdog in terms of like nobody visits our stores anymore. But now Pretty it's much, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. like yeah, the concept for Netflix is actually kind of cool because it utilizes well internet first of all, which I mean, nineteen ninety eight is I mean of course internet existed, but like, mm-hmm. this was still it was definitely not the internet we know today, right? Oh yeah. So it was kind of like jumping on the new tech basically. Yeah yeah yeah. And providing a service that was popular. Yeah, and way cheaper. Need, yeah, because, cheaper. Yeah. Without the need to actually, like, go to a store. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, I'm sure and and you have a store. And you yeah. carry all the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, uh, very interesting. Yeah. Very, in very interesting uh, company. I mean, it makes sense that they would wind it down because, I mean, DVDs, like what? Yep. <laughs> Although I, I have heard, like, uh, people want to tell me on the internet that s people are still buying CDs for to because the CDs are the next vinyl or something, something. Yeah, because, yeah that's true. Or I mean, the enthusiasts will do that, of course. Yeah, yeah, I can't remind, but I can't imagine CDs becoming as big as vinyl because vinyl is huge, still massive. Yeah, that's true, that's true. But I, I'm kind of. But CDs, I don't know, maybe. I mean, maybe. But I mean, we still used it. Oh, I mean, I yeah, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, and and people apparently still those enthusiasts still are buying like t uh, CD players and stuff for for their. I feel like they don't have yet this vintage uh, sort of nostalgic allure yet because discs are still a thing that exists, right? I mean, I don't use discs very much. Yeah, they are a s kind of a thing that's still... Yeah, yeah, they they yeah, still you exist. Can buy, you can buy console games with discs, and you can buy yeah. Blu-rays and stuff. Yeah, yeah. There is a like PS... Is, there like, is a PS5 with a disc player out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But, like, mine always sort of has this, like, aura of, like, mm -hmm. vintage-ness to it. A hipsterness to it, if you will. Uh, but maybe who knows? Maybe yeah, like I don't know, ten, twenty years from now, like CDs will be in the exact same spot. Mm -hmm. It's entirely possible. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. Completely moved on to digital purchases. Because the the cool thing now is to for the Gen Z as uh, are to have like a flip phone and to have a like a digital old camera. That mm. that's the that's the the newest craze, right? <laughs> Which is like mind blowing to me because why would you ever use to this digi old digital camera that takes absolutely shitty pictures and lasts for two hours on a battery. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. But yeah, that's the cool thing now to own. Yeah, yeah. To have a flip phone and to have a because the flip phone doesn't have a camera. So the the younglings they need a camera. They buy like this digital camera that they took pictures. Anyway, yeah. That is so funny. Yeah, yeah. So My boomer moment here. Mm -hmm. And the final one is not a piece of news, it's just a PSA. Yep. Uh, Diablo 4 is coming out next month. No, actually, no, scratch that. It's coming out in June. Okay. Uh, and it already had two beta tests. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's a very short, like, weekend long uh, play tests. And uh, from May 12th to May 15th, uh, no, sorry, from May 12th to May 14th, mm -hmm. uh, Blizzard will host one final beta test for Diablo 4, in which you'll be able to try out the classes and stuff. So, yeah. Excited? That sounds fun. Are you um, get, getting well, it? I, I'm sort of, uh, what, Diablo 4? I think yeah. I'm getting it. Uh, I'm not sure I'll be able to play the beta mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, well, s s teaser. Uh, I may or may not be in Tartu on that, on those days. Oh, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Teaser. <laughs> I don't really have anything to tease yet. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe next week I'll have some exciting news to share. All right. Um, But yeah, but if I am, I will probably check it out. It looks cool. Yeah. Uh, and I guess it's a good transition to our meme break and slash random off-topic chat uh okay yeah all right it is time for the meme break oh finally yes the main break uh by the way uh we're almost two hours into the show uh we oh no perfect we, we just finished but yeah uh so it the show will be a little bit longer this week but anyway meme break well, we have seven minutes come on yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so time for some football yeah this this is funnier with audio because uh, there's some beer bottles <laughs> clinking in the in the bag time for some football anyway also the chosen one the prophecy fulfilled 
he's teleporting to another dim dimension or something, probably. Because... <laughs> the prophecy fulfilled. Yes. Oh, and also, uh, I guess YouTube Vance is no more. I... Ooh. Which is uh, kind of a thing on Android. So this is... Uh, if it don't know what YouTube Vance is. Uh, it's a basically ad free. Uh, it's basically YouTube Premium <laughs> hacked the the pirate yeah. pirated version of YouTube Premium yeah, or something. You get all the everything you want. Background play, no ads. You can download music uh, videos if you want to and everything. But uh, since I don't have uh android phone then uh yeah i'm not using it i'm i use my own stuff but is youtube advanced now fully gone uh I think we may have... because i i didn't like yeah advanced no longer available hmm, hmm. so the the google stepped in finally Guess, the yep. Google lawyers were like, "Ooh, we we have to shut this down." I guess. Pay the premium. But I'm pretty sure you will get be able to get to if you search uh, the internet, you will get it from some sites. I'm pretty sure if you want to. But yeah. So th these are the memes. So let's move on to some music. What's happening in music this week? Uh, so this week Tiesto is releasing. Oh, let's go. Tiesto, if you if you're into Tiesto, but smashing pump pumpkins, yes, some old school. And smashing pumpkins. Wait, what? Lloyd Banks? Oh my God! This was the oh. this was this is the the G unit. So, so fifty cent and Lloyd, Lloyd Banks had a. Mm -hmm. Oh man, this was uh, one of um. On fire from him was was it on fire? I think it was on fire. Uh was one of my <laughs> tracks when I was 15, 16. <laughs> yes, go. some hip hop. Yes. But yeah, uh and uh, those are the for blah, blah, blah. if you see any kind of like artist that you're interested in, feel free to join. Anyway, my uh, this week was it's a kind of a chill track my music recommendation of the week is uh, nothing but everything John and Roy so wait did I say that wait a oh. oh it's 12 Sorry. to 14 of May Oh, never mind, never mind. <laughs> oh, I was just randomly looking at the calendar. Mm. The Diablo beta. Oh, yeah. no, never mind. I should be. I should, that's the Eurovision week, so I will probably be in her too, yeah? Okay. Or right. maybe in Perno. Or maybe in Perno, yeah, we'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, but the teaser was about something else, but never mind. Oh, okay. We'll have, to, we'll have to wait for another week. Oh. <laughs> wait. Stay tuned. Okay. Oh, I thought I thought this was a maybe some kind of a teaser that you're coming to Perno or something. But okay, apparently not. There's mm -hmm. some kind of a utter secrets going going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh yeah. So yeah, this was my music recommendation of the week and TV shows. What about some Stargate? Yes, I I'm on the. I watched like twenty five percent of the last episode of season three. The the last. Yeah, the last episode. I'm I'm almost twenty five percent of the last episode is going. And yes. <laughs> anyway. Wait, how long are the episodes in Star? Uh no forty minutes. Yeah. Oof. Can't. Yeah, for uh, yeah, forty five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So, some around that, but sometimes it's more. Sometimes it's less. Okay. Yeah. All right. Your uh, Last of Us for you? Yeah, The Last of Us is almost done. We have one episode left. Uh, we're going to finish it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just very good. It's just a very good show. 
Um, nice. I think we were talking about like that they did a very, like it can be a template for like future video game adaptations, uh, because it's like close to the source material and like expands on the source material in a good way. So it's interesting for both people who played the game, uh, but also it can be interesting for those who haven't played the game, and so it can be like a nice um, introduction to the game, right? So you can like play the game after the show, watching the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, like, I wonder if the reason why it's so good is because um, the game uh, was really good. Right. Yeah, like, like it, you, you already had like a very good foundation to start working with. Uh, this is this uh, is me with Dune, basically. Oh, the, the movie is so great because the the book was so great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I feel like there is something to that because it's easier to because a lot of your work as a like no, at least a writer, right, is done basically mm-hmm. because you understand what needs to be conveyed and. And then if you want to take some liberties with it, then you can or not, you know, depending on, like, you, know, you know, because some people can be pissed about it, you know, some people won't. So that's like a different thing, but you're not starting from scratch, right? So yep. if you have a well-written story uh, in the game and yeah, it lends itself nicely to a show, mm, actually. Yeah. Mm, yeah, it's very good. Like, I don't really have anything to say. About yeah. It. All right. Uh, anything else that you're watching this week um, or now? No, I don't believe there is. Yeah. All right. I'm I'm kind of watching the <laughs> Blood on a Clock Tower. Yeah. Playthroughs. Yeah. Whichever happens. They're really fun. Nice. And I even played the game. Really? Yeah. Yesterday. Oh, on uh, Discord or something? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. I guess a, a smooth transition to the. To the game section. Okay. So you get a chance to play something. Yeah. Uh, did it like video call or was it just like? Uh... Just the voice, yeah. Uh, just the voice. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. How was it? Oh, I I'm speaking first. Uh, have you played something? Oh, uh, I have not because yeah, I'm taking a break basically because yeah, mm. a lot of stuff to do at the house and uh, so. I don't really want to get into some games before because I know that Zelda is coming and maybe I'm I don't know. Uh, then again, I would like to play Zelda uh, on a computer if I can. Then and who knows how long it will take for somebody to be uh, uh, m- make this available on the PC uh, and yeah, we'll see. Judging by the previous releases on Switch, probably years. Probably no, probably like a couple of days. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, okay. yeah because uh, there was a period of time. Uh, I, I yeah. think it was early this year or late last year, where like literally every game that Nintendo released was like, oh, it's playable on like an emulator and it runs so much better on the PC. So there's that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I think you, uh, I'm not exactly sure, like what the emulation yeah, situation is. I... But I know that Pokemon was played on PC. Mm, okay, um, that's really good news. Played, I played Chronicles Three, uh, some other games. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea because yeah, I haven't looked into the the history of how the the hacks are made. Yeah. And but uh, yeah, so I just got into the Breath of the Wild mm-hmm. at the at the la- very late. Basically, where everybody has played already the game, and then I was starting. But yeah, yeah, all right, that's good news. I'm also very interested in Breath of the Wild, uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. We already discussed with Marius that we are going to get it. And mm-hmm. yeah, I'll play it on the Switch. Yeah. We'll see. The yeah. way that the God intended it. I hope it's good. The God uh, intended, yes, exactly. I hope that it's good. So, um, but so, so Blood, on the, Blood on the Clock Tower. Yeah, I guess let's start with that how quickly. How how was uh, it? Yeah, it was really interesting. How long uh, did it take? Two hours. Okay. Uh, playing it is so different from watching it. Yeah, probably. Because when you watch it, you like have all the information, right? Yeah. And of course, you know, you try to put yourself in the shoes of players mm-hmm. and to tell like, oh well, they got that information, so they should have, you know, they should have been able to figure everything out. 
but like it's very difficult to do uh, when you are playing because you, you, the only information you have is your character. And for me, yep. it was not even that because I was assigned a drunk. Okay. Yeah. And what the character does is that at the beginning of the game, uh, so you, they are assigned the drunk, but they think that they are a different character. So uh, the game is hosted by like a dungeon master. Well, in this game, they're called storyteller. Yeah. And so the storyteller decides which class you think you are, and they give you information uh, okay. that character would get if they were in game. So there is no way for you to know from the onset if you are drunk or not, because you think you are that character. So the only way for you to oh to figure out that you are drunk is to deduce that you are getting some bullshit information that is not true. Oh. So wow. the drunk is like a good character with a bad ability, basically. Okay. So the drunk is not a bad guy, right? You don't need yeah. to kill them. Yeah. Yeah. But they yeah. can just misinform people very severely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I uh, randomly was picked a drunk because it was like uh, the role was uh, bound to the seat. So it's like a circle. Uh, there is like a website where you can like make a game basically like an unofficial template for the game mm -hmm. and i chose the seat around the table that was uh, the drunk and i thought i was a different character and the entire game i was g getting information mm -hmm. uh, that was not true which was actually true okay because the storyteller can decide to give you correct information if they think that this will balance the game out mm -hmm. more evenly because their job, because you only have three, well, we had 12 players. Okay. And so we have three bad guys and nine good guys. Okay. So in order to make the game more balanced, uh, they would sometimes help the bad team, sometimes help the good team to make sure that the game uh, ends at the end, right? Like mm -hmm. at the final day. Mm hmm And uh, yeah, because of that, I feel I kind of screwed, uh, screwed up my team a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was getting actually truthful information about the characters. Yeah. Uh, except for one time. And I feel like the time that I got the bad information completely ruined the game for, for us because we spent the rest of the game thinking that it was true. Mm. Or it wasn't true. And in the end, uh, the good team lost. So okay. The, the demon uh, killed everyone. Okay. The in fairness, they, they played very good, very well. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, I feel like I feel like my drunkenness uh, was a big contributing factor. Yeah. Did you find out that you're dr the drunk at the very end, or? Uh, no, not really. Uh, so, uh, there was another character in the game called Librarian. Okay. And at the beginning of the game, a storyteller chooses two players and one role, and tells the librarian that one of the two players is that role. Okay. So they told that person that either me or another person were a drunk. Okay. And that person told me about the possibility uh, on day one, basically. Okay. So I did spend most of the game thinking that I may be drunk. But mm -hmm. because I was getting uh, the correct information for most of the time, Yeah. I kind of, at some point, just like discarded that yeah. possibility. Yeah. It was like, yeah. well, yeah. the other person is drunk. Mm -hmm. Because like... The storyteller would not give me the correct information every time. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, in the end, so <laughs> so they ended up dying. The other person at night. Yeah. And I was like, well, great, great. This is a good thing because they were drunk. So now we don't have any bullshit information. And it so then I ended up nominating and killing another person. I see. Because I assumed that the person was drunk, and their drunkenness was protecting an evil person next to them because of their ability. So I nominated that person for execution and they were executed. And it mm. turned out that uh, they weren't uh, drunk and that person was not evil. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so I feel, it was so funny because, oh, it was, because it was my first game and I was like, oh, what a great game to have a for the first time. I was just like feeding people like bullshit information the entire game. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the back of my mind, I was thinking that there is a chance that I'm drunk. But at the same time, I was like, well, if I'm drunk, then why am I getting all this good info? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was funny. But yeah, the, the evil team won. 
So the setup is such that there's one demon and two minions. So we ended up mm -hmm. killing both minions, and the demon was left alive, and they won. Yeah, all right. But it's, it was fun. It was fun. It was actually pretty interesting. Yeah, it sounds fun. So, so it's a, like a huge puzzle you have to piece together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. The only thing is that, like, yeah, Discord was fine. Because, uh, the only thing, the only time where it wasn't fine was, like, when we were at the town square, at, like, the default location. And we can, like, discuss stuff at the town square, or we can separate into smaller groups and discuss with, like, two or three people at a, at a time. Like, share information and stuff. And I feel like when you are discussing, like, all 12 people at once, it's kind of a mess on the Discord, because people get cut out, you know, it's sort of like, I don't know, the logistical side is just not great. Uh, yeah. Especially because every, there is limited time for discussion, and everyone has something to share, so it can get a little bit chaotic. Uh, I feel like in that sense, maybe face-to-face -face games are better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it was still a lot, a lot of fun. Like, I, I really liked it. And All right. said that he also wants to play next time. Yeah. I'm surprised that you didn't, like, play both of you or something. Yeah, well, Maurice was shy, and I was like, okay, fine, I'll do it first. <laughs> and yesterday they had the Blood on a Clock Tower 101. So it's like an introductory mm. game for new players. Okay. And I was like, oh, perfect time to join. And I was like, okay, I need to pick a seat, and I hope I don't get the demon, because it will be too much stress for the first game. Yeah. And I wasn't the demon, but like I was just drunk the entire game, which was also fun. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so, yeah. So, basically, I was somewhat playing for the bad team, if you think about it. If you think about it like that, then it's all good, because I won. Mm. Oh, you won? But, no, well, not really, because drunk is a good character. Yeah. That's... They can benefit the bad team. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, sense. yeah. So you're in between somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I was kind of just drunk, basically. I was mm -hmm. just chilling. Um, so that's it. Uh, that's a lot of fun. I feel like I will... Uh, so they do it every Friday at... <laughs> well, it was, it was midnight. They started at midnight, so... Uh, was curious, did you pay anything? Or... No. Okay. No, I didn't. I was just okay. Okay. Just like all like I'll... passionate people doing stuff. For all right. Fun. All right. Because I don't know. Uh, maybe like a, some kind of a tipping system or something. I don't know. Honestly, it wouldn't be a bad idea. But I mean, for the storyteller, definitely. Yeah, maybe. that's what I mean. The the storyteller mostly. Yeah, but no, they're just like excited to be there, and they said that they love hosting games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So because of... I know that Dungeon Masters in uh, Dungeons of Dragon Dungeons and Dragons they get paid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, if you play with a group of friends and you can DM, then that's like different, right? Mm -hmm. But you can just hire a DM also if you are not. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you don't have anyone to do that, because that's a lot of work that yep. you need to learn. Uh, so yeah, that was my Blood on a Clock Tower debut. Nice. Uh, so spectacular failure. I mean, uh, <laughs> still. Uh, but it's fun. It's it's very fun also at the same time because you work with very limited information. Yeah, yeah. So when you get new pieces of small small pieces of information, you start piecing it together. But because I was drunk, none of that made any difference because it wasn't true. But mm -hmm. like in my mind, that's actually they did they do a good job of like simulating the drunkenness. Yeah. Because in my mind, I like figured it all out. Let's go. But like I didn't. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So so that was fun. Um, yeah, that's that's what being a drunk is all about, right? Uh, you mostly get stuff right, but uh, some things you get wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or something. The I don't crucial, know. The crucial part was wrong. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So what was that? All right. And I, what else? I don't know. Uh. Ah uh, no. Yeah. So the PC exists. Yeah, okay, uh, I just wanted to mention The Mandalorian also. Uh, technically, cool. I'm still watching it, but ah. didn't watch this week anything, but eh. And uh, also, there's free games right now uh, on Epic Game Store, as always. Mm, By true. the way, uh, yeah, I wanted to give a shout out uh, GG Deals. GG.deals uh, is the website, uh, which I didn't know that this, this exists, but this is a way better place to look for deals on games because they it pulls from every single game store uh and lays it all out in a very easy to 
overview oh. all the game deals that are happening across all the game stores, which is kind of nice. So Steam, Epic Game Store, uh, GOG, uh, Green Man Gaming, Fanatical. This is a more... Uh, games Planet. This is a more uh, more nicer looking version of the is there any deal.com. Oh yeah. Oh, I did yeah, that's also not familiar for me. But yeah, that's from co going forward this this will be the the free game thing that I'm showing probably because this looks pulls from every single game store and very easy to see and looks nice and yeah, what's not the love? Yep, totally. Yeah, so Never Alone, Bl Beyond Blue, and Desktop Dungeons, th those are for free this week. And for also Far Cry 6 is for three thirty thirteen 13 US dollars, which looks a pretty good deal, actually. Like a, like a $60 game for $13? Far Cry 6? Mm, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, I wanted to mention, uh, re since we're talk uh, talking about gaming, uh, I'm actually surprised that you didn't include the trailer, the the unrecord gameplay thing this week. That was at least uh, I would have started. Okay, I just wanted to mention the unrecord video that uh, has been. Uh, two days ago, published on the internet that everybody was losing their minds of. Have, have you seen uh, this? I, I've seen it just today. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I'm posting you the link of of uh, uh, IGN, and as far as I can tell, the whole internet what went like, "What? This is the new game. This is the new standard of gaming now." And oh my god, I want to play it, and blah blah blah. And it's still in development, and it hasn't come out yet and people are like losing their shit right now because this looks insane because it looks like this like what what so okay funnily enough it like and and the the number one discussion right now on the internet is basically like okay this is fake this is completely like just somebody strapped a GoPro to their chest and they're just filming. It was completely filmed. And the developer then came out, showed uh, like a clip of of uh, this being uh, not fake. And record a flight clip or something. Where the... I think, oh, I don't know where the real video is. Yeah, yeah, but well, basically this is one of the videos that is showing also that this is running in engine, in Unreal Engine, uh, Unreal Engine 5, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, that this is actually, yes, this is a game and this is actually real. I didn't need the proof because there were many hints in in the in the video trailer that well for me it was like pfft, okay this is a, well, obviously fake because okay for example kicking down the door in this clip oh my god the animation of the foot is like basically a cartoon at the, for me at least i don't know but yeah there's and the, and the flashlight uh if you well, wait where's the flashlight uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, there is no way a fla a real life flashlight look uh, lights things like this. There will be some light around the flashlight. Also, it's not like completely big. No, but it doesn't say that it's fake. It is, it is confirms that it's an actual game, right? Uh so it's not like a real world footage, but a game. Is that what you're saying? Uh. Well, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's clearly a game. Yes. Yeah. 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 But that's what so I mean. It's a real, a real footage but, of a game. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. But, but thousands and thousands of people are arguing on the internet. This is, uh, this is just filmed 
in real life with a GoPro camera and uh, just just a fake video, basically, of a vi fake video game. Yeah. I feel like someone like and IGN would confirm that before, uh, before posting. Uh, so I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. My, my first... My, uh, okay. Did you, uh, did you watch the whole video, by the way? I did, yes. Okay. Uh, I unironically... I uh, don't really like the way it looks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. I mean, that's I, I fine. Mean, it, looks, it looks very realistic, sure. Yeah. But that's the point. It looks so realistic that it looks boring. Okay, you know? yeah. It's like, like a rural, uh, sort of dilapidated Russian countryside. Uh, with Because uh, that, that's our in our backyard, basically, right? <laughs> because, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Naked trees and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You shoot someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of, it kind of gives me the uh, vibes of a game called Condemned Criminal Origins. Okay. Uh, which is actually a pretty good game. Uh, it's like a horror game from the 360 era. Um, okay. But yeah, I mean, it looks realistic, but again, realistic yep. does not equal good. That's kind yeah. Of uh, and also, the thing is, it looks people who are the people who are arguing on the internet like oh this is clearly gopro footage and i'm like uh gopro footage doesn't look that good if you're like shaking around it like it's not mm -hmm. as sharp basically because uh mm -hmm. so there there are so many signs that this is not like real life that yeah, this is yeah. this is a video feel, game yeah, you're right when it goes into but, the dark part of the video it's clear that yeah it's a very video game lighter yeah 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 flashlight lighter flashlight yeah 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 exactly so and yeah the animation of the leg is very video gamey like the sort of perfectly centered like a stick like, yes the door. yeah video game thing yeah exactly um, there are so many signs but th so many people are so convinced that nope this is fake this is somebody filmed in a we weird w warehouse this this whole clip and uh is trying to sell a game or no. something i mean if anything this just speaks to feel like it's a good thing right if it's a bit yeah like this is good. yeah yeah this is absolutely the mm -hmm. Unreal Engine 5 Matrix demo um, that came out. Oh, yeah, I think I have seen this also. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know, but it also looked largely very good, and there were just certain aspects that were clearly CG, right? But, like, mm -hmm. if you were looking at an aesthetic image, uh, it was, like, it was mostly about the uh, city, right? It was about... The buildings and reflections and stuff like that. Yeah. So if you look like at a still image of like a building or like a street, then you could fool yourself into thinking that it was a picture. But yeah, uh, like explosions and some other things who are clearly not. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, I like, wanted to mention also the 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 one of the biggest tech YouTubers, uh, Hade Donnell, which is the Estonian one. He he even did a video about reacting to this video. Also, like. Whoa! my god this is so crazy blah blah blah, blah. anyway but uh, there is another video that i found on the internet which is like also unreal engine 5 it's called environment art cliffwood village which is also like uh insane if you look at it uh in terms of like realism and uh a lot of people are yeah okay this was uploaded three weeks ago. Uh, this is also looks insane. The, well, the, this looks like a video game. That's uh, but it looks amazing. That looks so good to me. Yeah, imagine like oh, oh man, Elder Scrolls Six or something. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is mm -hmm. oh, but uh, so the 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 conclusion and the big point here is games like this are coming. I don't know when, but yeah. this is this is this is in development right now. They, these these are not fake uh, videos yeah. of games. Like this is. Uh, well, don't we already have confirmed? Uh, let me see. I mean, of course, the early Unreal Engine Five games will not look like that. But yeah, 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 yeah. It's, uh, it's... the point is also that it needs to be mentioned is that. 
typically the tech demos look very impressive. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, always. The games that come out. Uh, and the waterfall actually... looks pretty not good in this video. Yeah, uh, water is difficult. <laughs> water is really difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, what was the thing? Yeah, like the initial games, the early games that come out on the new engines don't look as good. But when we get to like the end of the life cycle of the engine, usually games look better than the tech demos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it can even get to that point. I mean, we can look at we can look at also uh, uh, Hellblade Two, uh, oh. Microsoft's game. Uh, they also recently had a um, um, graphical showcase for character models mm. using Unreal Engine Five. Gameplay reveal uh, or. Uh, uh, a demo. Remember. I feel it was recent. A month, a month ago. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. I think it was mostly centered around. Okay, yeah, this stuff. looks good. Um. So yeah. Very yeah. Interesting. Just the faces, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This is coming, people. This is awesome. This is really cool. I mean, that, uh, <laughs> that uh, like, the shooter wasn't, did not, I mean, I, I want the games to, like, stimulate my imagination, but, like, if you just give me a dilapidated neighborhood in some Provincetown, Massachusetts, <laughs> I, I'm, I don't feel stimulated by it in any capacity. <laughs> uh, that, uh, you know, that, uh, the cliffside thing, yeah, that looks cool. Yeah, like a whole, like, RPG uh, based on that. Sure. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, this just looks... use the, use the attack to make good art, basically. Don't just like. Mm -hmm. Make like a photorealistic uh, garbage. Uh, that's <laughs> just me. I mean, some people like this sort of like photorealistic, uh, you know, stuff. But I, mean, I have enough photorealism in you know real world. In real world, yeah, yeah. But. Um. Yeah. All right. But yeah, this 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 was the big stuff that it was. That's that that was. I just wanted to mention this story because yeah, the the whole internet was like wow because of this warehouse game that is coming out in who knows how many years. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, if ever, uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, by all accounts, it's made by some random studio. So yeah. It doesn't also, seem like it's like backed by big money. Yeah, yeah, so. that's yeah, exactly. So they they didn't even uh, on Steam. I don't think they even mentioned any kind of uh, record uh, date. Yeah, yeah, to be announced, release date to be announced. So who knows? Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. Anyway. Uh, yeah, and the final thing I'll mention is that I have been playing Doom Eternal on PC. Yeah. A bit of it. I just started. Um, yeah, it's Doom Eternal. Uh, <laughs> I am playing on the Mac settings and everything, mm -hmm. and it looks very good. But for the sake of fairness, it also looks very good on PlayStation Five. Oh yeah, because um, yeah, it can. Yeah, yeah, it it probably looks fine also on my smart fridge. Also. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah. I, I also am playing with ray tracing. Um, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, I, I I wouldn't say that it changes the game completely. Uh, it looks pretty. Yeah. I mean, and the, I mean, ray tracing works best when you have like some nice like shiny surfaces. Mm -hmm. But like the game is so fast paced that you don't really have time to like. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it really doesn't add much. To yeah, yeah, yeah. Because fast paced shooters, then it's like, yeah. How long have you really have time to look at some reflections and some stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There are some games that are also on Game Pass that I am kind of interested to try out. That could be a better maybe ray tracing showcase, but that will happen later. Uh, I did yeah. have a uh, trouble with the game. <laughs> uh, it was uh, I started playing it, and at certain points, not at certain points, but like let's say I don't know, 15 minutes uh, into playing, it would just freeze the image, and you know, for all intents and purposes, crash the game. Although it wasn't crashed because the sound was working, but the image was completely stuck. 
Really? So, yeah, so I was like, okay, well, that's fine. Amazing. The first game I play on PC, and this is what happens. Yeah. Uh, but I checked the internet and found that there is some setting that they added, uh, like months after launch, that oh. is meant to like stabilize frame rates, but basically oh. ends up completely breaking the image uh, on NVIDIA cards. Oh. So I, tur I turned off that setting, and it works fine now. Do you remember what setting it was? I don't remember. Okay. It was complete like nonsense. Like okay. I've never seen a setting like that in any game I've ever played. Um, it wasn't like vertical sync or something, right? No, no. Vertical sync settings were separately. Okay. Uh, Interesting. But but yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Now that it's fixed, it's good. Good. It's good. Yeah. All right. And, uh, the the card is more than capable of running intent. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, dude, it better better should be because Jesus Christ. So, give me a bad, give me that un uh, what's what's the name un unrecorded. Give me the yeah. recorded, then I'll play that. <laughs> yeah, uh, in this about it. Four years when it comes out. Okay, give me Hellblade too. Give me something. Come yeah, on. yeah, yeah. Um, so that's about it as far as games are concerned. Uh, next week. Uh, wait, where are we? On 28th, which is when? Uh, 28th is next Friday, okay. Oh. The next Friday, Star Wars Jedi Survivor is coming out. I think we are going to buy it. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm very interested in that game. Mm -hmm. I am like 85% mm, sure it's going to be good. Okay. Um, I trust the developer to make a good game mm -hmm. so i guess on saturday i'll have a tiny amount of stuff to talk about uh, i mean of course we're going to be fighting for the controller because morris is going to be also like oh, i want to play it uh but i'm pretty sure we are going to get it on console though yeah okay yeah I, yeah it just looks like a console game to me ps5 uh, Xbox? Yeah, yeah. We don't buy games on Xbox. Only like some old Xbox games that are like backward compatible. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's gonna be a PS5 game unless we learn that it's like I don't know for some weird reason not very well optimized for PS5. But mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, still like I have been playing games on PC and it's fine. But like yeah, thinking about like months uh, ahead. That yeah. we're gonna have summer and stuff. It's just does not seem like fun to play games on PC <laughs> in summer. Uh, yeah, you need a very good cooling solution for yourself for for that in the summer. Yeah, but yeah. I will be looking at the Steam summer sale. Maybe there will be some bargains on some older games that are good. Mm -hmm. So maybe I will double dip and play through some games on PC. All right. But for now, Doom Eternal. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, All right. Let's... A small, tiny update from my side. I think my clock is out shipped, and maybe will arrive next week for next stream. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe. Uh, there was some kind of a, like. A, by the way, we are shipping now. Email and uh, I didn't get any kind of tracking number so i don't know maybe but maybe not mm -hmm. anyway yeah uh and everything else is pretty huge i guess that's about it oh my yeah i guess it's time to wrap up so two hours and 30 minutes i know yeah yeah i, I mean i said there weren't that many news but no i mean uh, there were, weren't that many news but uh we a little bit stayed uh, discussed the news a little bit uh, longer than usual. That's why it's uh, a little bit longer. But it's not a bad thing. It's just no. yeah. a thing. It's just that I don't have. I'm not experienced enough in hosting. So I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. just to, for some feedback. Yeah, yeah. But usually I do them a little bit more rapidly. Uh, like, okay, okay. Right now, let let's go next thing. Next thing. But today I, I, because yeah, I wasn't in charge, so I didn't like rush basically. So it's a little bit, 
a little bit longer, but it's all right. It's fine. It's okay. Mm. And m- m- now, finally, Michael maybe can uh, uh, enjoy the, the deep dives, a little bit more deep dives to the articles that okay, he no. he wanted. To, he, he gave me feedback that... <laughs> yes, I was catering to Michael. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh... So he's he's finally getting his wish. That's oh, good, good. Yeah, right. that's... I think that's that's all, that's all for the week. Huh? Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, next week. Uh, next week, Saturday, gonna happen. Saturday. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I feel like that's yeah. I, I'll have a bit of things to talk about Star or, Wars and. Uh, or does any um. Or does Friday also work, maybe? Or I, I or yeah. I'm I'm kind of thinking maybe I because there's a friend coming next weekend, c- coming mm-hmm. back, and maybe we have some kind of social gathering. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, we can do Friday. I have a day off on Friday as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. But first day you work. First day is uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or maybe I mean, Thursday I also have a day off, but. Uh, yeah, I, I I will get back to you. Uh, yeah, I have days off from Thursday it, to Sunday, so because we haven't locked in any day because we don't know. He's coming from Spain, and he's uh, yeah. I need to talk to him to what day he arrives or what All day right. we can do some gatherings and yeah, yeah. Right. Anyway, was fun. I yeah. How do you feel about your first tech talk hosted? How do I feel? Yeah. I, mean, I feel good. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. A bit more talking than I usually do. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. So. So, uh, okay. Uh, you mentioned last stream that uh, maybe we can do it this type of thing more often. How do you yeah. feel now about it? Uh, yeah, I still feel like that can be the case. Yeah. And uh, since uh... I, I'm down, uh, if you want to yeah. take like uh, because yeah, again two hours, right? It it's an an investment. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it's fine. I mean, uh, as I said, next week I also have four days off, mm. so if there is a time to do that next week, would be also the time to do that because I could uh, sit down and prepare. Uh, so maybe we can use that opportunity. And then, because uh, after that, I feel like my schedule will get a little bit messier again. So okay, we can we can go back to the normal normally scheduled programming. So you down to do the next one also, or I am yeah, I am, that's okay. That's okay to me. Yeah, yeah, I quite enjoy. It. Yeah, that that's why I was like, um, yeah. Well, well, it's it's some work. Yeah, you still have yeah. to do some stuff. Because yeah, yeah, it's not easy. That's fine. It's enjoyable as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, I mean, learn stuff and, and stuff. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Then who knows? We will stream. I will. I will have to get back to you. And mm-hmm. uh, for those so, of you who are sometime from Thursday to Sunday. Yeah. We'll stream. <laughs> yeah. Keep your whole weekend ready. Yeah. Don't something. you dare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that will not be tolerated. Yes. In yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, thank you for hanging out with us, people. Uh, we love you very much. And uh, leave a comment on the video. What do you? Yes. Which one do you prefer, me or me, me or Guerrilla? Being confront- confrontational. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, it's fine. Uh, yeah, and. Uh, Hit the bell or something if you want to catch us live because uh, yeah it's always a little bit more fun to chat live. I don't know. Mm-hmm. That's why we yeah. do it live. It really is, yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Bye everybody. Bye. And. Arrivederci, bitches. Arrivederci, bitches. Oh, I need to still figure it out how to send you some audio from a PC because. <laughs> then it would be more fun to have the memes appear on the screen. Anyway, bye.